Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, welcome to the Journeys in Jazz, um, like, prototype anniversary stream, the title idea. I wasn't sure how I wanted to word it. Um, since one year ago today, I uploaded the Journeys in Jazz, the Fruit of the Gods prototype to itch.io. And it's also, I presume, more or less when I started development on the full game from the prototype. So, we're going to be celebrating that today. I'm going to play through the prototype, which should take probably 15 minutes tops. Then I'll play through part one and two, and I'll talk about some development trivia, among other things. A whole, whole lot of stuff. It'll be fun, I hope. We'll, we'll have to see. I'm probably going to wait a couple minutes, maybe two more minutes before I pull up the prototype, which we'll start with. Once uh, part one and two, depending on how I'm feeling, how long this stream has been going, I might show off the very beginning of part three, since this will be, I will be using my development build, which has part three enabled. But we'll worry about that one when we get to it. Now, I don't know what I've put on this. As in on the stream description. Okay. All right, and let me put a link in the YouTube stream description. I updated it to have a link to the itch.io page of Journeys and Jazz, The Fruits of the Gods, part one and two out now. Um, the game says it's on the itch.io page. I put a three to four hour package. Uh, that was my estimate for a first time playthrough. For me, I should be able to get it done in an hour. Just a bit quiet. Okay. I have um, a friend helping me out with audio. The stream says Maple Story. Interesting. I never put a game title under it because you can't make up game titles. So that's funny. Um, all right, it's been about three minutes. Let me pull up the prototype. I can move my preview to the side. Okay. So, there we go. Um, let me make sure the tab is no longer muted. I did. A little bit of audio testing. The audio might be a bit off, might be a bit loud, might be a bit quiet. Now, I haven't really... I looked at this prototype a little bit earlier today, just to make sure what I was getting into. But other than that, I have not seen this prototype in probably a year. We don't want to continue. New game. So, uh, so this looks a lot different than the current game. Well, I say a lot, but I think a lot of things are different. The portraits were um, much older. When we finish the prototype and move to part two, or part one and part two, you'll see the portraits have been changed a bit. Like, I believe Drek and Tezka's were redrawn at a higher 
resolution showing more of the body, but Celeph was completely redone, I believe, since I was struggling a lot with her. I remember that one. She was a hard one to get the base portrait right. And Leonard, it's not Leonard. Actually, it was originally Leonard. <laughs> um, but I, in, when this, I probably should explain what J&J &J was. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit rusty when it comes to talking. <laughs> Um, so Journeys and Jazz, The Fruit of the Gods was originally a tabletop campaign I ran. And, um, so this is a retelling of that campaign and all four of the main characters are, of course, the players I had. And on the first session, I said Leonard, because I didn't really, because I looked like Leonardo and he's a bard. So I was like, oh, it's got to have some oomph to it. And um, the name stuck, so it's it's Leonard, but everyone calls him Leonard because I think that was a me origin mistake. Um, anyway, he did not have a portrait for this one. I never got around to drawing his out, and I found the basic RPG Maker one worked perfectly fine. So, in the prototype... Okay, can sprint. Oh, it's so rusty. <laughs> it's so different. Um, it was basically a simple, like, oh, hello, young lady. The young girl kicks Leonard. Ah, oh, my leg! It was very early on. I was, like, showing off how NPCs will act differently based on who you talk to them. Like, if you talk to her with Selif, she's like, oh, you're so pretty. I want to wear pretty dresses, too. Instead of being the prince is like, oh, ask your personal tailor to make one. And she just doesn't say anything. So it's kind of like Selif is a bit, um... She's not the best at social cues. That's one of her <laughs> flaws. So we kind of got all... Just wants to throw this random man into her dungeon. All sorts of things. Does he have a name? He does it in this. Okay. Um, get a doctor, and it's like, you know, talks about their Torialises and mentions the prin Malachi princess. She swears. I didn't know she swear swore in this. That's funny. I've been trying to keep swearing to a minimum in the actual game, but, um, three of these NPCs appear in part one. This doctor guy, he he never appears. He was originally going to, and he did appear in the original campaign, but I never added him to uh, part one where he should have appeared. Mostly because there just wasn't really a spot to fit him in, and I had another character that was like with him in the campaign that fit his spot. But we'll get to that when we get to part one. And over here we have, of course, the journal where they can... Where the characters kind of talk about their current feelings about their quest. And like you talk to this and you get, oh, you get Celis re like opinion on Leonard. So all sorts of things. Oh, Drake had a different original sprite. Same thing with Leonard. Um, I don't plan to go fully into everything. Like, I don't want to do a 100% playthrough of the entire game and the prototype. Like, if you're interested in this, you can, uh, the prototype is free online. You can play it in your browser, which is what I'm doing right now. And, J and part one and part two are available together as well. And, um, on my edge.io, which I Hopefully the link in the description works. Um. Okay. Sorry, I'm checking around. I need to keep an eye on some stuff on the side, but I don't actually know where I put my phone, so we're going phoneless, but that's fine. Um. 
Is there anything else? Um, no items. I think that covers most of the prototype, but the big thing is, um, this right here. Ah, so you finally arrived. I, I missed reading that. And Leonardo's like, who are you? I go by many names. I believe a common one you mortals call me is the God Slayer. The God Slayer? Amazing. I thought that was just a myth. I'm afraid I don't know what a God Slayer is. You never heard of the God Slayer? They're a legendary warrior known for being so powerful that even the gods themselves can hold no candle to their power. Enough of the history lesson, bard boy. I came here with a purpose. I want to fight you. Test your strength. What do you say? I'll try not to kill you. So yeah, like, one of the big things. So half of it's the NPC talking. The other half was, like, a combat example to kind of show how the different characters would uh, fight. And like their combat roles so you know we got it's using a of course I was like taking some time to decide what kind of combat system I wanted it was like turn base this one which I'm not sure I think it's like active weight and then there was full active which has the meters continue going even when you're making a decision and I decided this one was a mix of the dynamic compared to like it's a mix of the dynamic turn order you can kind of see how it goes and you're making decisions kind of reactively but you're not in a rush you can take your time to Ooh. okay I wasn't focused on the game take your time and we got I believe I believe I changed also this system where it's magic and special now it's offense and support but we got Tezka uses Claw, so he attacks twice, like that. Um, Leonard's a bard, so if he just attacks, he's gonna do like one damage, and he's got a lot of magic skills, so... Um, let's buff Drek. It's interesting, when we get to part one, you'll notice that a lot of these skills... Well, they won't have it at first, but they'll gain most of these, but some of these they won't gain. Such as, Selith doesn't have Armor Bless in the proper game yet. I never gave it to her, but she does have Heal, Ice, Taunt, um, Protect, and Deep Breath. But Deep Breath was completely redone, comparatively. So we could just have Selith attack. Um, Slash was renamed. Equalized Strike, I think, is added in part three, but late into it. We also got, like, Taunt and stuff. Good things, like Drex A. I try to separate them into roles, and they each follow two. Selif is a defensive, so, like, support role. Her offense isn't supposed to be the best, and that's one thing where she kind of just, boom, she does a lot of damage from her ice magic. Tezka's a support attacker. Drek is a tank attacker, and then uh, Leonard is, I think, just support full, like healing support, and then yeah, bus and debus. Uh, we'll warm up with Tezka so he can act more often. And of course, buff stack twice. I changed the icons for these so it's more obvious when you have one or two. And a, a big thing I liked was having the character comment when you're at half HP. And I think they also comment when you get them to half in this. So a lot of like, oh, this would be cool. So this was a this is a big important fight in the proper game. As in, the fight doesn't appear yet. It's a it's a part late part three fight. So it's funny how it's in the prototype, and I'm just now like re to. Fixing it up a bit for the proper game, so it's funny to see how this fight's going to be similar, how it's going to be different. The characters are going to have slightly different skills, they're going to be higher levels, all sorts of things. We can at least give everyone a little heal. Healing is hard to balance, that was like a big thing. And I can talk more about that into 
um, the game proper when we're in part ones, and that's when it's very obvious. So we're almost done with this fight, halfway over now, we can flex with Drek. Um, I'd like to give him an energizing, let's give Tezka an energizing melody, since Drek's about the flex and gain TP that way. Never mind, Tezka got completely killed. That's fine now, I don't remember this fight being... It's a little hard, but I know what I'm doing, so it probably won't be that bad. We'll just spam Energize Melody on Drek to keep him buffed up. I would go for the Equalize Strike that requires Drek actually to get low on HP. Which, I, I did not mean to do that, but it's fine. I meant to revive um, Tezka, and I don't think I get the chance now. Yeah, the Inner's down. We're almost down, so it's going to be a 50-50 whether or not these two can attack enough to get through it. But, like, they do so much damage in this prototype fight. It's fine. See? Boom. I did it. End of the world. This fight was very fun to make in the beginning because the whole thing was, oh, if you do enough damage, they'll, um, what is it? You do enough damage, they use that skill early. So either it's one of those fights where you lose either way, but it's like slightly different result depending on if you win or lose. But, um, that was honestly the prototype. Pretty simple, honestly. I think it covered everything I wanted to. I didn't really want to be on this one very long, and we did spend about 15 minutes, like I said. So if I close this, I hope OBS didn't pick another browser. Good, it didn't. Um, let me disable that. I'll get, let me open the game in RPG Maker, and we'll get right on into part one. Ooh, it looks like my my audio settings never saved for it. I think I was at... Um, let me mute it in OBS. I forgot to save my settings. Alright, I think I got it. There we go. Now let me pull it up. There we go. I got some sharpness to help keep it from being blurry. But we can start a new game. This is gonna be fun. I love playing through this game. It's just a blast. I really enjoy it. Just reliving the memories nonstop. That was delightful. I may have to steal a little good on my own for more cheese on this journey. And if the player, if my players for this are in the chat, they're going to see me, <laughs> um, kind of pretend to do their characters' voices. It's gonna be funny. Ah, oh, hello! Are you here because of that flyer? I'm so excited for a new adventure! Hmm. I wonder who else is going to show up. Both of these two are kind of that British accent a bit, but, um, Leonard's a much more bardish loud and sounds a bit more posh since she's, like, a princess. My favorite Tezka quote, though, I have to be honest, is the ellipses. Say, are you here for that quest about... What was it again? The Crepes of the Gods? Talking fellow, isn't he? Now, honestly, I remember it. I remember it so clearly. It was the second time... I've ever DM'd. I DM'd a one shot before this in the same party, but this was like the first campaign I ran. And it's probably been two years. I remember vividly that Celis player was there first, and I was so excited to start. I was like, let's set up the scene, tip generic kind of the party meets in a bar. And it would be. So I was like, okay, let's start. What are you ordering? I think it was something like that. And she was like, cheese. So 
that's why her character is commenting on cheese and luckily RPG Maker had a cheese sprite. Good morning, it's a pleasure to meet you all. You can call me Professor Owl. I'll assume you are all here because you saw my request. I'm looking for adventurers to help me discover the secrets of the fruits of the gods. Good lord, what is going on out there? Could you three please investigate? And why should we? The guards will take care of it. Okay, cool. We're going to find some typos. Of course, of course. That's fine. Every playthrough, there's going to be typos. I will be jolting them down, and if you're in the chat and you notice one and I miss it, please let me know. There we go. I wrote that one down. Let's go check it out. It could be an incredible start to an incredible adventure. I agree. It would not hurt to at least see what's going on. Plus, maybe I can find someone to throw into my dungeon. I feel like I might want to change that one to the happy cell if because she's probably really happy about the idea of throwing someone into her dungeon. A, a dungeon? Yeah, who doesn't have a dungeon? Never mind, I use it right there. Then it's fine. It's fine if it's right after. <sighs> fine. Let's just get this over with. What am I getting myself into? So we already got like a good example of the person eyes, of course. Celif, of course, um, whenever I'm on my debug build, it gives me a warning about this map, but I've never figured out why, and it's only this map. It's not that bad. We already got Leonard, this kind of loud bar, Celif, a uh, princess with a lack of, just not very good at social cues. Tesco's a bit of a downer, a bit serious, a bit edgy. That was kind of his aim. Talk. Oh my, what could be causing that ruckus? Could you please investigate? And we get some time to kind of just look around, explore this area. All fun. Just, just lock the gate. All sorts of things. It's fun. Got some rooms. No audio because it's like, oh, the ground shook and wants you to go outside. We got. See if it goes to food. Might be able to come back to bed. This guy from the prototype, the bartender. And this guy, who also appeared in the prototype, but now has an actual original portrait. He's one of the lucky ones who got one. Uh, do we get the event of this? Oh, yes, we do. Perfect. Oh, my gods. I really should have not eaten all that applesauce. I'm going to be here all day. This character is actually a reference. I can already talk about references. This is a reference to a character... That uh, Leonard's player played in a one shot after this campaign finished. He was this like buff orc um, zookeeper because it took or zoo security guard because it took place in a zoo. And he um, he would eat applesauce. I think at the end because he had to leave a little early at the one shot. He went to the bath like his character went to the bathroom from applesauce and it was funny everyone else though they, they touched the orb and that's all i can say oh uh, what's the big idea <laughs> one bite i'm already feeling so powerful i don't know what voice to give this person the audio jumped up a little bit i'm going to turn it down a little bit it's also louder on my end than I would like it, but I have to do it for the stream output. I say, good sir, what are you doing? Are you picking a fight with me too? You're gonna regret this. And now we got the first fight of um, part one. Don't get started without me. I have to teach this fool what happens when you mess with Drek. So since this is a tutorial fight, everything's a lot more simple. You got your guard, your item. Um, every character only has one skill. We could just attack. Like, Leonard just scratching Melody. That's all he gets to weaken his opponent. I think, yeah. Tezka only has warm up. 
Seth only has taunt, so everyone, I think Drek's the only one with a non support skill as his first one because he has strong attack, but everyone else is just supporting today. Which is fine, it kind of was the most core aspect of their build. Like, Tezka's an agility type of character, so him buffing it lets him move way more. And of course, as you can see with the icons, now there's two arrows, so it's much more obvious when you have two buffs compared to one. Um, what was I saying? Sorry, I, I get sidetracked. But we can just keep attacking. It's just mostly, it's a simple battle. When Leonardo attacks, of course he does one damage because he's super weak. Let me turn up the game a little more. There we go. In case I overcorrected it, put it in the middle. I love the missing though. It's always fun how a drug just will miss a lot. Always at the worst time. Um, interesting thing, because he's at zero. It's going to run out right after this, so I can just warm up now. Just give it to him. Always for fun. Leonard's not going to do anything, so it's best to guard. Uh, let's see how you like this. This was actually changed in the most recent update to be... I kind of reworded that little thing. And now they have a new sprite. These two are, of course, hand-drawn. I've considered going back to add some shading, make them a bit better. I think I have the original file still. Well, Drek's getting close to a strong attack. That's good. Yeah, now we're in a phase two where they're a little stronger, doing a little more damage. Then we can do a strong attack. Hopefully Drek doesn't miss. Sometimes he misses, and it's really bad when he misses. Since it's like, oh, his big attack. Oh, I miss setting up the buff again. Um, I think we're getting close enough that I... I think I'm just gonna go for attacking in general. And we'll just scratching Melody again. Hopefully we're almost done with the fight. I think it is possible to lose if you're unlucky. Yeah, he does, or like, um, the thug does so much damage. It's crazy how much damage they do sometimes. That's why it's so important to get the, um, the attack debuff. Like, in part one especially, that debuff is so important. There we go. Yeah. Like, it was- it felt close, but it really wasn't that close. Of course, we get some XP, just enough to put around the level 2 where they gain their second skill. And of course, it's question marks, so you don't exactly know who's getting what, but it's in the order they're shown. And, um... Oh, I can- I can skip that by switching here. Okay, I think the event plays slightly different. It's Celis in the front. But Drek, of course, already said his name, so we know who he is. And you can also figure out probably who got which skill because you just played as them. And of course, their skill is going to be similar to what they just got. That battle was tough. Just what was she made of? I could not have been her natural strength. I sent some sort of powerful magic from her. I could have taken her alone. She just called me off guard is all. Of course. The cop. Not cops. The guards show up and they're like, time to take you to jail. We'll take it from here, citizen. Off to jail with you. Just dragging them out. All the fun stuff. That went well. We make a good team. Thank you, Drek. I, I appreciate the help. Aha, uh -huh. it seems that hooligan dropped something. I believe if, if anyone else is in the lead... Um, Selif is the one who goes grabs this. A fruit of the gods! In all caps for fun. 
Let's head back to Professor Owl. I have to have a word with him. Just taking notes. I swear if he was responsible for this. So we got kind of Tezka also. He's a bit paranoid. Never, not really a trusting type of person. Wait, are you three on some sort of adventure? Yes, my good sir. We are on an adventure to uncover the secrets of the fruits of the gods. What would you say about having a fourth member? I'm one of the strongest ogres around. Everyone group huddle. This was one of my favorite things Leonard's player would do would just be group puddles. So I tried to incorporate a few more than I did in, than there were in the campaign. I think this one's fully, a good amount of this event's fully original. The, the thug wasn't, but Drek was at the table of everyone else in the beginning. So the Drek introduction was changed a bit since I felt like this kind of worked more for the character and everything. Not sure if we can trust him, but he would cover our weaknesses. All right, my chum. First chum spoken. He'll be saying that a lot. It's his catchphrase. We'd be happy to have you on our team. My name is Leonard. Pleasure to meet you. I am Selif. Pleasure to meet you, Drek. Tezka. I say sh we should return the Professor Owl with the news. Okay. Good to know. I was on a test. I can switch here. That's interesting. And everyone disappears. The thug really... The thug really did just break a lamppost. Luckily, we managed to beat them before someone got hurt. Of course, because we leveled up. HP's full. I thought it'd be a nice thing to have. Of course, if you're wondering how I'm changing, it's the L key is, um, I found a plugin and the L key lets me switch characters. I did it to make it a lot more convenient. Also, actually, now they're in the menu, we can actually see, yeah. I forgot to mention, Leonard has his new portrait. His hat was made brown. His sprite's also a bit different in general. His eyes were made green because I, I was making it and I was like, wait, what color were his eyes? And we ended up deciding, me and the player, that they should be green. Self, of course, is much better. And Tesco and Drek are very similar since they were just cop. Basically, I duplicated the old portrait, redrew it, but at a different resolution and ex extended their body. Uh, anything else? I don't think so. Of course, some of their statistics are a little different. We got the upper district is off limits. This leads to, well, you can't go there, but this is like to the rich district of Remora. Since my idea was you're spending a lot of your time in the kind of the poorer area of it. And the nobles are over here, such as I think these two mention it. What do you think is going out? Side of the town. Every day, all I hear about are bandit attacks. I don't know. I worry about our safety. We all know Bartissian won't do a thing. Shh. What if someone hears you badmouthing him? Ugh, I hate that you're right. I just wish he or any of those nobles would even glance our way. So, this is kind of. It's setting up the tone of the town a bit, you know, poorer district. The wealthy has people like Lord Bartissian and um, a bit of corruption, all sorts of the fun stuff. Got this guy. They're sleeping. A uh, little secret. Talked with Tezka. Yoink. Obtained 50 gold. Easy peasy. Got this guy who's just training. I'm thinking about giving him a line where he's like, if you talk to them specifically during this segment, he'll be like, I would have helped, but you, you four looked like you had it completely under control. So yeah, while the game wants you to go to the bar, you're free to walk around the town a little bit. 
which is fine, you know, just some exploring. Got this guy, so we ain't laying any passengers on yet, that's tomorrow. Go explore the town, you need to waste time that badly. This was my attempt at making a boat. It may not be the prettiest boat, but you know, it gets the job done at the end of the day. And that's kind of what was my goal with this, just kind of, it gets the job done. We got, um, fast food, this merchant. He was in one of my original prototypes, but he got, got, he was one of the ones that got the cut for the, uh, prototype that was actually made public. We got these guys, these kids kicking a ball. Some nerds exploring here, I kind of did this just to put something in this empty area so it wasn't just sand. Gonna nerd up here, they should be stepping honestly, I don't know why they're so still. Let me write that one down. I'm actually taking more time to look at the little details than I normally do honestly. Um, I wanted to put a troll chest in this area like, oh look at this chest, oh I wonder what's inside it. You, you can't, you can't check it. You're not allowed to go see that chest. Oh yeah, touch screen, you can touch the go places. Um, a way out of the town, you can tell from the path and this guy's kind of like guarding it to warn you. It's kind of like um the guards outside of Clock Town in Majora's Mask a little bit. I played Majora's Mask recently, so it's kind of on my brain very much. We got um. You know, we can, let's just, let's go, um, you know what, before that, I believe, let me check, yes, okay, this was, here's a little secret, I added this really recently, I think it's in the current build, wow, a secret item, if you interact right here, like right there, the tile before this one, you get a little potion, just a little secret item, I think that's like the only really big change I've done to this part. Well, there's been a lot of changes, but that was like the only content added, technically. Most of it's just fixing, like the item obtain things have been centered among other things. Now we're in a new map. The bar now has uh, people in it. All fun. Talk to him. Ah, oh, you're back. Did you find out what? Tell us, did you set us up? What? What are you talking about? Don't play dumb with me. That thug had one of those fruits of the gods on them. Did you give it to them? What? No, if I had one, I would never give it to some random thug. I want to research them, not cause chaos. Why should I believe you? Tezka, please let him go. I don't think he's lying to us. Anyway, who is your new friend? The name's Drek. I decided to help these guys out. They look like they need a strong, mean, green ogre. Professor Owl, that thug had a second fruit of the god on her. Incredible! How did one person get two of them? I see. Based on my notes, this one seems to be a fruit of power. So they give immense strength. Why don't you hold on to it for now? Obtained fruit of power. I had to have a colleague in Pristella. His name is Osseus Particate. Before I forget, take these tickets. The SS Benefer leaves first thing tomorrow morning to Pristella. This will let you board. Obtained boat tickets. Also, could one of you type your email address on my laptop so I can contact you all later? Ah, here you go. Thank you, the loop boy. It's Leonard. Oh, I don't think I got your name yet. My name is Seleph. I pleasure to meet you all. I'll be here when you get up tomorrow. I have to return back to Strickerford University to teach my students. Oh, one more thing before you go. If you find yourself needing some rest or are wounded, make sure you visit the hospital next door. So yeah, we got some, you know, mentioning Osseus Particate. Those of you, my my four players, you know exactly who Particate is. Um, kind of all sorts of things. Tezka being very aggressive. We got all these NPCs you can talk to. What's this guy doing? What are you doing? Playing solitaire but being high as a kite. Nice, you're playing it wrong though. No, maybe you've been playing it wrong your entire life. That's a good NPC. Oh yeah, and because the game is modern fantasy, I meant to comment on this. 
they do have laptops. They have phones, they have laptops. Um, it took my players and myself about halfway through our campaign to remember that phones existed and technically every character had them. In fact, I'm working on how to put that scene into the game itself. Um, so we can also talk to this guy. What can I do for you? Guy of rumors. What it look like? An information broker? Here's a rumor for you. Next guy to vomit on my table is gonna wish he drowned in it. Aggressive barkeep. If you talk with, oops. Ah yes, could I have Leonard? I swear, if you break, you broke another chair, I will end you. I did no such thing. Aggressive bartender. Not a big fan of uh, Leonard. Also, as we can see, the dark elf guy in here is gone. Of course, I talked to him. He looked pretty strong. I've been planning to go on an adventure. What weapon do you recommend? Personally, I recommend a good solid defense. I see. What about offense? What about offense? So like this is kind of talks about he was in the prototype and it was a way to also further talk about each character's build. But of course, the priest one was drawing. Go on an adventure. What weapon do you recommend? You know how to sing good, sir. Well, I do love me a little bit of karaoke on the weekends. Then play all your foes a beautiful song. Let your melodies win your battles for you. Of course. Thank you, Traveler. I'm going to go weaponless and sing my way to victory. Rounds out. Wait, my chum, that is a smart idea. Should we chase after him? We don't know where he's even going. That fool is going to get himself killed in the desert. So, of course, the thing, we got these guys who give, like, they give hints about the enemies so you kind of know what they're going to do ahead of time. We got this one, this person, who is Lord dump about nergs. If you want to learn about nergs, you talk to them and they'll tell you all about nergs. Nergs are my life. We haven't actually seen. Oh, we have seen a nerg though. Let me go to a nerg real quick. After this. This is just some, you know, a little tutorial talking about the side quests and the journal. And then we get the journal. I forgot to center that one. Okay, let me jolt that one down. Of course, not everything. I'm not perfect. There's going to be bugs all the time. You're welcome. Um, but yeah, let me go find a nerd. Let me go talk to a nerd. I think we got this nerd right here. Chitter chatter. Why, hello there, little fellow. I love the nerd. I made the nerd, um... Oh, a little bit before I think the campaign started. It was an original creature. I think my icon on YouTube and... I don't think it's not my icon on Twitter, but my icon on Tumblr and YouTube is the Nerg. It's a six-legged kind of like arthropod insect type of thing. I don't know. I love them. They're just my existence. Right here. Oops. I blocked her. I changed her... I changed her thing to kind of help prevent her from getting stuck, which was an issue, but it, it caused less. My nerg is missing. You have to help me find him. Of course, it would be honor to help you find your pet. Oh, you'll help me? Oh, thank you. Please find him bring home to safety. Or safely. One thing I tried doing was um, having NPCs. Like, when someone's speaking in all caps, their nameplate will also be in all caps. Now we can explore the town. We can see... Hmm. This ruin building. It has super ruin on the outside, so you know it. We got these two. This is, um, we'll come back to that one. Actually, no, it's, we'll cover it right now. It's easy to get out of the way. Um, you talk to her with... Let's talk with Selif first. You talk with Selif. And Selif's like, oh, your daughter's adorable. It's like, would you like to go ice skating sometime? And she comments on the desert, and it's like... Selif was- this was Selif trying to flirt. Selif is confirmed lesbian. But if you talk to her with Drek... Not Drek, Leonard. And he's like, ah, oh, yes. Leonard reveals that he's been in this town before. That's why the bartender knows him. But everyone else, like, just got here. For this quest. 
He's like, I play in the tavern every night. Surely someone has told you about the great and most talented Leonard. I don't visit the tavern. I'm too busy working and taking care of my daughter. Though my husband used to play an instrument, he isn't with us anymore. Oh, I'm sorry for your loss. Don't be. He was a scumbag. I personally made sure he would never play again. One of my favorite comedic things to do is no dialogue, just the expression. Say, if you four help clean on my basement, I'll let you take his instrument down there. Of course we will, my fine lady. Let's go, gang. I guess we don't have a choice. We're gonna go down and take these antidotes in case our rat bites you. Here we get three antidotes. We got, I think, five rats down here. Wow, I think the audio did go up a lot for the fight. I don't know why the battle audio is so much louder. It's crazy. Uh, the rats are very weak, so I think you could just kind of auto battle them at least. So I'm just going to hold attack. Worst case, someone gets poisoned. Not the worst. Sorry, I was clicking, trying to get up. Oh yeah, that's another thing. After you, um... What is it? After you defeat an enemy once, I made it so they'll then have a health bar. So, you know, the first time you fight someone, you're not going to know how much HP they have, but every other time you will. Just, uh, I think it was an interesting compromise since I had players in my playtest complaining about no health bar. And I personally didn't want you to really know because the game already kind of tells you how much HP something has left. Um, let me try to get it in the right range. I think right now, like when they're at low HP, their name tag turns yellow. And I was like, I think that was good enough personally, but people wanted um, HP bars. So this was kind of meeting in the middle and I'm a fan of the idea. You might be able to turn the health bars off in the setting, actually. I don't want to... I should check. I'll check right after this. Of course, I'm just powering through the poison right now since it's not that bad. Let me check the setting. Uh, I thought it was. It's not. Autosave is on, though. Autosave is just to make sure... Um, Convenience. I don't recommend relying on it though. Autosave is not reliable. Okay. Of course, he barely doesn't. But boom. You do. When you do these, you're about halfway to level 3 now. So, you know, it's a little bit of XP and not the most. Now we can talk to her and be like, oh, we took care of the rats. And you get the worn out loot. This was the fun one to make. It is a, it is an offensive Leonard loot. It makes him a bit slower. It worsens his magic, which right now, it does affect healing melody. It makes healing melody a little weaker. But at the but it gives them a little more attack and it inflicts poison with I believe a hundred percent chance. Of course, some enemies resist poison. So you know, very nice to have. Very nice. Um, what else? I think later on in part one, as we move forward, I'm going. To, I'll talk a bit about. What events are technically canon? I think we got a funny little dialogue and we talk with Self and she's like, Oh, what kind of potion spells do you use here at the hospital? And I'm like, dearie, we just use good old fashioned surgery. S surgery? Self obviously comes from a very high, ad highly advanced magic civilization where they don't do surgery probably very often. They mostly do use magic to heal people. Um, we can also change in there. So we talk with Drek, though. 
they have this little conversation, and she's like, oh, can I see your weapon? And she lifts it up easily. And then she gives it back, and then you get a strength bracelet, which increases your attack by 5%. Um, it's not really useful on most characters with how low their stats are, but, you know, pretty good. You can see all of my saves from playtesting. Let's save over... That one. File 19 is probably not important. Um, oh yeah, she did appear in the campaign. She's a... Uh, the, the doctor character would have appeared here. I probably could throw him into this tile. Wait. I can't click on it. The, the stool up there. So he's in his office. Since he's like the doctor and she's the nurse. Um, she appeared, I think her only characterization was that she was a really buff old lady. Which was, you know, fun. <laughs> we step here, this guy kind of goes in. Uh, we could go in there, but let's not. Let me save real quick. This is a fun one, if you're like, on the counter is overweight nerd. It appears to be sleeping soundly. Zzz, chitter. Ooh, that is Smookums, my nerd! Ah, oh, can we better? Of course! You pay the fine, that is. Pay 100 gold. We can pay. She bit me! How much money we got? So if we do it again, you know, and we don't have enough money, it's like, oh, you don't have enough. Come back when you're a little richer. But if we say no, this is a fun one. Can we better? Of course! If you pay the fine, that is. No, I will not. Then perish. Game over. I did not mean to hit new game. Oops. There we go. There we go. Now we're back in here. We can leave. Um, I don't want to talk to him specifically, actually. Hmm. Nah, we're not going to talk to him. You can talk to him, but there's actually a... It's a tiny dialogue change if you don't talk to him. And this part, very small. Um, I want, I want to do it. I want to show off, like, the hidden small events. I'm trying to think of other ones. Oh, we're actually not done here. Um, we can go in here. We got... Oh, look at these guys. Switch. Fuck. What are you doing? I'm playing this new tabletop game named Journeys and Jazz. Now my players get to see me uh, impersonate them. Journeys and Jazz? Oh, what a silly little name. I say it's going well so far. I got a shape shifter. I might reuse them in the next campaign we do. Shape shifter? Yep, he turned into this drunk bear man. It was pretty cool. Too bad he lost a drinking contest. That sounds eerily familiar. So yeah, these are... My four players and me. And like they're playing um our campaign zero as I call it. Which is um it was our this is our first campaign and it was retconned to be the prequel to um campaign one. I think about ten years before this game in lore. And of course, Tezka appeared in that, so this is Tezka's second adventure. So he's going to be referencing that. I believe he might even reference it if we go into the journal. Um, let's see what he thinks. Another adventure, huh? I never found out what was behind that behind the Turkey invasion in Turksville. Maybe these fruits of the gods will enlighten me. The thug may have more information. We should go visit them wherever. Alright. Uh, Tezka. There's always going to be typos wherever they keep prisoners. So yeah, we talked. An interesting character. She's an excellent defender and should be able to handle most attacks tossed her way. Her magic skills leave much to be desired. I thought Torialis were renowned for their magical abilities. Maybe it's related to her lack of intelligence. Speaking of which, I have a feeling she'll get us into a lot of trouble. Tesco's really mean. 
Like, Tezuka is, is this super jaded character who just kind of... It's not that he looks down on people, it's that he's very pessimistic. A painfully charismatic character. I hate to admit it, but his songs are helpful. I'm not sure how helpful it would be in battle, but we could use a talker, especially a human one. Strong and sturdy. I think that sturdy should be capitalized sturdy. Loggy carries. Or he fights with that loggy carries. I've seen that kind of wood before. It's the perfect kind for a blunt weapon. He doesn't seem like the charismatic or intelligent type, so maybe we shouldn't let him do to much talking. Of course, we want to intimidate someone. Very rude. Very rude, Tezka. But we love him. And then we got dragons like, No, I asked for that wizard for a vacation. I never thought he would send me to another world. I'm not even sure why I decided to go on these go with these guys on this fruits of the gods thing. A lot of typos already. And who knows, maybe they'll actually be the onions of the gods. That portrait was a fun one to draw. It's based on um, the Zelda CDI King laughing kind of thing. I try to like emulate the perspective and the expression because I just like it. Oh my god, I don't know what to think of him. He keeps himself hidden both physically and emotionally. I'm only worried that he may backstab us. What is she doing in a place like this? She doesn't seem comfortable in this heat at all. This guy is so annoying! Always blabbling on about songs of this and that. He reminds me of someone from back home. Ah. So yeah, the party doesn't like each other yet. They, they just met, so of course they're going to be a bit, like... They're not, they don't know each other at all. They just met. I'm so lucky to be on this quest. Imagine the stories and songs you'll be able to tell about this. I'll make you proud, Papa. Trick my act mean and tough, but my bird eyes can tell he has a layers. And as we peel them away, we can have a stand-up guy. I feel like the more I go into this, it's more obvious what Drek is a uh, parody of. He was much less a parody originally, is all I'll say. I bet he'd love to hear some of my songs once he gets to know me. Ah, uh, such a withdrawn individual. I know just the thing to open him up. A song of my homeland. Surely that will invigorate him. She's definitely interesting. I'm honestly scared of her sometimes. I hate this desert. It's so hot. I can't wait to get off this continent. I have to stay strong regardless. I need to obtain these fruits of the gods if I want to stop my mother. I need more power. I hope we find some cute girls too. Oh, such a funny man with his funny songs. I should make him the court jester when I get back home. I'm sure the maids would love him. This dread guy reminds me of the yetis from my hometown, except less hairy and a bit meaner looking. And so as you can tell, a lot of these are referencing, um, they're the same as the prototype. It's kind of scary. But yeah, you know, the party's not a big fan. You can use the crystal or you can use the journal item to warp back, of course. Um, not this building. I think it is this building. The one I missed. Yeah, a little chest here has a kid's meal toy. If only it was a deluxe one. It increases your HP by 5%, so we'll give that to Celis, since, of course, she has the highest HP, as you could tell. Um, and we go in here, we got him. Wickmonald. We got this guy who's like, I've been spending all my money on kids' meals just so I can get a deluxe toy. I can't go home to my kids unless, until I get it. Imagine your disappointment if I don't get them one. Imagine the disappointment when they never see you again. No, I'm so close. I can feel it. And of course, you can talk to them. If you talk with, like, other characters, you get different results. I don't, I don't have much money, though. Sadly. But a kids meal toy for 350 gold. Um, when you open it, you get a burger item that gives 50% HP. And then there is, I think, a 1% chance of getting a deluxe kids meal toy, which instead of the 
5% HP boost. It gives a 15, but it's very rare. Grumble, grumble, kobolds. We got this guy who's like, he hates kobolds. But Tezuka already can read this guy like a book. He's like, oh, this is what you want. <laughs> Dude's like this grumpy old man shopkeeper. We don't need to worry about him. I would go in the tent, but I want to save it since it's a little bit of a hard combat. But we got the bazaar, we got this kid who's running really quickly. It's a pain to try to... It's a fresh. It's like frustrating to try to talk to them, but I like how annoying it is because like this hyperactive kid. Yay, the bazaar! Where are your parents? I don't know! They just keep running. I thought it was cute. We got this guy. We got all sorts of people here. We got, um... Welcome to Warren Accounting. How may I help you? What's accounting? Get out. He puts on sunglasses when he shoes you away. All sorts of fun things. This is the most important NPC, though. Basically, you give him shell pieces. Oops. You can turn... If you have three, you can make a Nerg shield. Or one, you can make a Nerg plate. The shield being Seliph's weapon. Every character has one weapon in the part, in each part. Uh, what else? Taking my time on part one. Uh, um, I think this thing has a special. Okay, so this is just a training dummy, but this one has a photo of someone on it. Go here. There's the bat, the thug. We can't go over there because we got this guy over here. He's like, don't go over there. What do you want? What do you got something to convince? I'm going to speak to the half mermaid lady you arrested today. Because you're going to let some new faces talk to a prisoner? Yes. Ha! <laughs> Maybe have one of my men vet for you. Then you leave and it's like, oh, what do we do? And this is where we get like a secret Tezka reveal. He hides around the corner. Then boom. Tezka's a shapeshifter for fun. Which we also found out from actually talking to the sailors. So now Tezka's got different, but we don't have him in our party just so you can't switch to him. It's like back already. It's like, sir, I decided to help. I will take responsibility for them. Of course you would, Matt. Fine, but make it quick. Yeah. So we can now we can go in. Can't go down the stairs, but we can talk to them. Hey, we have some questions for you. Go away, Matt. I won't say a word to you guards. So Matt's kind of a joke between the, the guards. Which guard is Matt? Up to you. I never decide on which one's canonically Matt. We aren't with the guards. Tesco, what if he looks? Relax, he won't. He's too busy with paperwork. Well, tell us where you got those fruits of the gods. You four are the reason I'm here in the first place. How about you let me out? Maybe I'll tell you. I don't think so. Sure about that? What if I were to? I don't know. Make some noise and have that pig over there look over the checkup on us. Of course, the thug, you know, calls calls the guards pigs because, you know, they're, of course, of course the criminal's a cab. <laughs> Damn it. Fine. We'll see what we can do. Sure about this? No, but what choice do we have? We need that information. He isn't paying much attention to us. We just gotta get behind him and knock him out. I believe there is a hidden little bit of dialogue. You talk from the front. He's like, all oh, this paperwork. No, we ought to loom three. So as you say, all the upper district, who cares? Corruption! Jazz hands. I love corruption. Drek, now! If you say so. And then we let them go. We got... And we get some, uh... Backstory, we got a rusty key. I think we talk. Yeah, she's going to loot the place. The guard's in there. You still can't go downstairs. The character's like, I don't want to go down there. Uh, I think that's about it for the town. We picked up the nerd quest. We got the desert. This is a fortune teller if you ever need advice. There's a lot of stuff in here. We'll pick up an erg. You can just walk and pick. There's like six of them here. But combat. Oh my god. My phone actually is nearby. It just buzzed. 
I found my phone. That's good. Uh, Tesco can warm up. The Cobalt Brawler shouts. Then we got some scratch melodies. So we got the Cobalt Brawler and Archer. Um, I I decided what I wanted was that Cobalts would be... I know sometimes Cobalts are kind of like reptile-ish. Sometimes they're more dog. And I wanted to go for a mix. So I kind of went for this kind of like... They got some fur. But they also kind of have... I think I based some part of it off of like dog anatomy and then some off of like more reptile anatomy it was kind of a hard mix but i kind of like the balance i got uh Celeph doesn't need a taunt it's fine if she can hit it. um i want to take up the archer first the archers the archers do a lot of damage so they're like annoying they're the damage dealer of the bunch Well, the brawlers are a little more tanky. They're kind of in the middle. So I think this is an armor piercer. Oh yeah, because he did boost his defense, so yeah. We'll just keep armor piercing. Slowly whittle this guy down. I forgot. Because we have the worn out loot, of course we can poison this dude. So he's not able to do as much. There we go. Easy. Cobalt Horn, and everyone levels up to three. And Leonar gains play wildly, and Celif gains ice. Oh. Okay. And yeah, while you can pay to heal at the hospital, I'll probably make it cheaper since the free heal isn't that much farther. But yeah, you can heal here for free at the oasis we got a little skit here so we're like let's do this here is that an oasis wow the water feels so nice don't like my water more muddy but this is good too come on we should get going we have stuff to do come on my chum let's rest for a bit yeah let us rest for a while i don't think you're going to step in the seat you see really uncomfortable are you not from around here I am from the Malachite Kingdom. I would say walking in snow is much easier compared to sand. I miss the freezing air, the snow, and the pretty mermaid shows. You speak is really formal. Are you a noble? Well, um, um you, you, you could say that. What does that mean? Just who are you, Sella? Well... You ought to come over here. I found a huge coconut. Let's crack it. Let me at it. Y yeah, let's break that nut. So that was kind of a fun little scene to talk a little more about Cell's backstory. Um, I'm gonna run from this fight. You can always run from fights. There we go. Um, and this is where we start the long arc of Tezka questioning Cell on who she is. And the reason he's so like interrogative is because he interrogated a lot originally in my campaign, the player. Like, a lot of interrogation. I'm going to make a quick save. Even the character like, something feels off about this place. But let's go inside. Ah, uh, welcome to my humble home. I saw what you four did today. Really show that thug who's who, didn't you? Yeah, it was nothing hard with these muscles. Flex is really hard. You think you're tougher? You want to do this whole town a favor and help me with a special job? What kind of job? I'll tell you about it, but first... Uh, what was that for? I just need to make sure you're good enough for the job myself. Come back. Welcome to a mini-boss. The mini-boss of part two. <clears throat> Very important, the scratching melody, of course. Um, this guy has a interesting... I think is I've only really used it on this guy, but if you use if you use taunt, he is more likely to use armor piercer than his other attacks, but if you don't, he's like it's more even. Which is a small thing I did to um I think 
Okay, so it's about 50 damage. Yeah, he just did double check and does so much damage. So let me heal back up so if I should have bought a potion or two for this fight, honestly, items are very powerful. Let's have his armor piercer. Do. Armor piercer is better. Okay, he is spamming double attack and Selith is not having a good time. I'm just gonna cast ice. That's really bad when the it feels horrible when the strong attack misses, but I wouldn't have it any other way. There you go, now he's using armor piercer. We're gonna armor pierce him back, and it misses as well. Uh, let's go for another healing melody. Selv is still really low. Oh, we're gonna have to reapply that debuff on him too. Yeah, Selv is down. Uh, play wildly is a nice skill. It deals some damage, restores your MP a bit. I've been nerfing it a lot recently because it's hard to balance. Like the TP game gain exactly. But as you can see, they're missing a lot of their skills that they had in um original. I really need to lower this guy's attack so badly, it's bad. I'm probably gonna lose this fight because I'm getting really unlucky with the misses, and sometimes it just happens. Sometimes RNG is not on your side and you just miss every hit. It's bad, but we're going to try to tank through. We got Drek and Leonard. As long as Leonard doesn't get hit too much, we're fine. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, because I missed an armor piercer. I've missed like two strong attacks. This is a loss because I just got really unlucky. And I just got to his second phase, wow. But, oh my god, wow. It's like a 5% of miss, that's insane. I don't know why I missed so much. That's fine, like this is a mini boss, so you know, it's supposed to be one of those things that it's possible but really hard on your first time. So like, you can just come back and do it later. Like, that's a good fight instead. I believe there is also, if we go here, it's that that um adventurer that we gave advice to. I'm actually not going to fight, I'm going to make a little save first. And now we can fight the bandit leader. So these guys are just the kobold brawlers, but like a little weaker? And the leader's basically them, but stronger. They don't have all the same skills. I think I have like less skills overall, but you know, it's fine. I'm going to go poison the leader. I'm going to focus down the leader since they're going to be the most annoying. So we can do ice. Lovely uh, change to ice has been the um. The new icon. I got a new icon very recently and I'm very happy about it. I'm a big fan of the new one. We'll go for a scratching melody since he's poison. And he's buffing himself so much, so we might as well try to like counter it a little bit. We'll go for a wide sling swing the you know, branch out the damage, go for an ice again. Yeah, they're starting to really buff themselves and it's gonna get bad. I don't even know if Tez- yeah, Tezka's not gonna be able to do any damage right now because they just buff their defenses so much. Some enemies really like to just buff themselves. And it's a hard balance to try to get them to buff themselves decently but not constantly. These guys might be buffing themselves a little too much for my taste. This guy doesn't have any buffs though, so we can go for him next. Yeah, we'll go for this guy because he doesn't have any buffs on him. And then we'll go for a play wildly to help keep Leonard's teeth or MP up. 
Oh, there we go. And now that we KO'd one, it actually reacts live and gives you the uh, HP statuses. I'm gonna go for this one next. Yeah, I'll probably have to tone down how often they use Shout, because that is a lot. It's good that they keep their buffs high because it makes them more challenging, but sometimes they do it too much and then it's just they don't actually attack you because they're so busy buffing themselves. And we'll go to Taunt to sell if we can keep everyone busy. Healing Melody for fun. Yeah, see, like, that guy's already, like, maxed out buffs and he's still just doing it. I'll have to tune these guys a little bit. He's got, like, one HP left, dang. Might be worth to leave him until, uh... Let's try to get him with a play wildly. It's a 50% chance. There we go. Play Wildly is not the best offense, like offense skill, but it is, it does work. And of course, Body Slam stuns you, which is a horrible status to deal with. <clears throat> but we're almost done with this fight, and we can always go to the Oasis to heal, so it's fine. I wish RNG was going better for me though. I can't believe how bad it's going. But you know, it, it's, it makes balancing hard, I've noticed, is the fact that you never know how good your RNG will be. But you know, we can talk to this guy. He doesn't even thank you. He's horrible. He's so mad at you. What a jerk. But you do get a reward. You get his tooth. The Tooth of Impulse increases TP gained by 10%. We'll give that to Drek. Uh... Oh yeah, if you try to pick up two nerds, you can't. You can only grab one nerd. I do not want to fight. <laughs> and you see there's this fancy cactus. It's a bit... It glows a bit. Way bigger. And Drek's like, look at this butte. Drek, that's a cactus. I know, but look at it. It's perfect. I don't know why he's so posh. Picks it up, hurts himself. I thought it was funny how it was like kind of MS Painty, or just like the pure red. Of course, it puts him at 1 HP, but you get arguably one of Drek's best weapons. Increases your attack, but it hurts you. It's a really good offensive weapon, and most players I've seen equip it in this section. Now, I could always hand the Nurg over. I think I did grab the first, the right one. It always appears around those ruins, but to like, like on the right side of the ruins, that's a little fun fact. That's where the Nurg usually spawns. I want to go back in the tent though. We'll switch him to the front. And we can enter the fight again. This time, we're... Okay. Okay, sure, whatever. Um, we're not that much stronger, but we at least now have Drek's better weapon, at least, so... I'm going to... If Tezka dies, he dies, honestly. It's fine. There was literally nothing I could have done about that. Sometimes Tezka dies in the first five seconds, that's okay. As long as we can just really focus down on this guy and take him out, we'll be fine. I probably should try to poison him. That'd be a good thing. He has some poison resist, but not a lot. Oh, let's try to get that poison on him. It missed. It's a 5% chance to miss, but I miss a lot for some reason. Uh, talk because she can't do any more ice. And I'd like to have her protect as well, since I need Drek to just stay alive for a little longer. So I'll have her do a protect too. And she's not going to do that much damage, and I just want Drek to live. 
Though this could kill Drek, I just realized. Oh, I didn't kill him. You can kill him. Luck really isn't on my side today. It's insane. Look at everyone a big little heal. Okay, now we're in part two. Um, try to poison him again. Am I gonna lose again because... Okay, okay, okay. We're going to try something because I could just reload it. We're gonna give Drake a potion. Give him a little HP. We're gonna hope for a strong attack. Okay, no. Yeah, okay. We'll reload. It's fine. You know, you get used to it. We'll come back to that uh, quest later. I think I have a kobold horn though. So we can do that. Give him this. You get one gold. Makes a snarky combat if you don't have or comment if you don't have any. Um Oh yeah, little little hidden thing. You come in this house after um doing the to be adventure request and it's like go away. And his name is changed to failure. Leave me alone. Dot dot dot. Having you ruined my life enough. Dot dot dot. And that's all he says. You know, kind of a down end. That's technically, um, if you want to be the best, if you want to do your good karma run, you don't do that side quest because uh, his life is not good. Um, what else? Oh, earlier I was gonna while we're going around this area, probably going to do a tiny bit of grinding for kobold horns and stuff. But while I do that, um, regarding. Uh, what is canon and what isn't? The only thing canon is probably talking to Bangle, going to the nurse, like just talking to the nurse, fighting the thug, and that's it. Honestly. Like, my party did not spend as much time in Remora as you do in the game. But, you know, I extended a lot. Now we have, like, this whole... The thug now gives you a side quest, among other things. Uh, I'm gonna try to kill that nerd with a play wildly. No, I'm trying to use offensively right now. I could go for a wide swing and that would knock it out. There we go. Uh, we'll do ice on this one. Cause yeah, ice does a lot. Yeah, my party didn't spend much time or more, so technically a lot of things are not canon. I rather mention though that um, Bangle's gun is actually canon. He did accidentally pull a gun on the party in the campaign, and it was funny. So I got some more XP. We got the door here. Um, a little side thing is, you come in as Drek? What are you four doing here? He's like, what do you know about ogres? What do you know about ogres? Let me tell you, they'll turn your skin into a fine leather. They will use your blood as a sauce. They will grind your bones into a fine dust. So stay back, I'm the third strongest kobold here. You'll regret messing with me. Oh, will I? Or will you regret messing with an ogre? A very hungry ogre. He, don't hurt me Take the, to take this. You won't hurt me if I give you something, right? He gives you 250 gold and he's like, get out of, get out of here. And he runs away. That was easy. I say you scared him half to death. The stories aren't true, are they? Nope. People always make so many stories about ogres. They apply more than giants. Sal is terrified, of course. Sal, is everything all right? You said that stuff wasn't true. If you come in, I think as Selif, you um. Let me see. I can do a, I think I do another combat in here. Um, instead of wild random encounters, you got like these guys walking around, and when you 
walk when they like spot you, battle starts and you can't run. We gotta take out the archer. He's got low defense. Um when you come in as Selif, a combat starts against just the one Cobalt. So you know if you want XP, technically that's the better one to do. I think. Leonard and Tezka, you don't have a fight, and I'm pretty sure Selif can tie the guy up if it's the um, Tezka route, I think. Also, wow, these guys have a lot of defense. They're not immune to poison, at least, so you know. Have Leonard just kind of poison them. And it helps cut down their HP while normally Leonard can't really do much to these guys. I'm actually going to save a lot of my, uh... I was really hoping I'd hit. I don't know why Drek keeps missing though, that's weird. Like, RNG definitely is not on my side for this playtest, but that's fine. Sometimes you gotta get playtests with, like, the worst of luck. Reapply poison here. There we go. Now take him out. <laughs> okay, well, um, the poison will lower him back down, I think. I think actually he might have z one H. I think he has one HP. Yeah, there we go. And one of the two hits missed, so yeah, it was one HP. Nice. And Tuska's down. It doesn't matter that much. You can get into a really icky situation if it's just Leonard and Selif against the Nergs and Selif doesn't have any MP because um of course those two these two specifically can't really hurt Nergs at all because they're more physically attacking like Selif about MP. There you go. Now we got their shell pieces. They leveled up. Drek gets taunt, so now he can also tank a bit better. And Tesca gets dual attack. Dual attack is the important one. But more important than that. Got a little scene. A lot of my play treasures try to interact with the hole um, before getting the scene, so it's funny how they notice it and like want to interact with it. But you got to move a few steps fold forward, and then they interact. Yeah, we got a bunch of kobolds and like Eldrick's like, oh, it's not that many. We can take them. Pants down and Tesco's like, we can't. And Leonard's like, oh, well, look. Well, the option we had this kid was pretty linear, you know, a bit of fourth wall breaking. Because it's like, there must be some other path. I think you're exaggerating, Tesco. How hard could it be to fight some kobolds? Think of all the XP we could get. She has a point. We could level up. It is funny, I do usually do that fight for the level up. When I'm doing my personal playtest, I do that fight because I really want the level up. But, um, okay, that guy is still here. I just want to make sure he didn't despawn. But you notice, if you notice, there's a little bit of a crack here and there's a pickaxe. After you get the cutscene, because the guy, because you're prompted to look for another path, you can now interact with the crack. And you can open up the wall. Because there's no path at all. I'm sorry for doubting you, Tuska. It's fine. Let's just find the leader and get out. I still think we could have handled the kobolds. Would have been easy. But I guess it's nice to avoid some way to fight. We get um some money, an MP potion, and venom claws, which is a weapon for Tuska. I'm actually gonna give Leonard the normal loot. The Venom Claws is like a 50% 50, a 50 chance twice because it's two hits. Uh, did I ever get this? No, you get MP Potion there as well. Uh, I would like to fight the, the mini boss now and I think this time I can do it. So let, let's actually go back and take care of that. I should also mention the journal has updated a little bit as I do the main story events, but since, but I will not be covering most of those. 
if you want to explore the journal after like every big thing you do, you're free to. Let's put Self in the lead. We can skip through that and let's do this fight this time for real. Oh my god, someone already is almost dead instantly. Let's just dual attack. This is the poison. This is so much. Oh my. Uh, you know what? We can do a double Drek Celif taunt. And that like is a really good idea if you really don't want the other two to get touched. Maybe this guy fully resists poison actually because he's not getting poisoned at all. So I'm going to double taunt just to really prevent Leonard and Tezka from taking more damage than they need to. I'll have to check the code to see if this guy is um, fully resistant to poison or not, because I don't really remember. I'm gonna keep a healing melody next turn. I'm going to try to do a scratching melody. Hopefully. Okay, no, he's just really resistant to poison. That time I got it. The bosses are really resistant since because poison is 10% of your damage. It is really bad to get poisoned. Oh, yep, Red has halfway point. Also, because of how strong uh, poison is, I made it so if the player inflicts poison, it has a debuff to like, it also doesn't last as long. So as you could see, the poison lasts, I think, like three turns. It's like three to five it can last for. Me playing Melody. There we go. There we go, we did it. Oh, I did it that time. Nice. 100 XP, 100 gold. He's like, oh. Yeah, we got, um, I'm planning to take care of everyone's favorite Lord Bartissian II. And I can use some assistance, but don't worry, the pay would be good. Bartissian is a rich fool and his gold will be ours. Uh, how about no? I do not think assisting a murder is something I should be doing. Well, I'm not interested in forcing your hand. Just know if you speak a word, you're dead meat. Of course, honor among thieves, after all. Talk to, like, with Trek. You're back. Have you considered my offer? Nope. Are you here, then? Good question, actually. Same thing with Tezka, but if you talk with Leonard or Selif, you get a, nope, I just want some goodies. Why would I give you anything? We did beat your quest by defeating you. The adventurers always get a reward. You're not going to leave until I do, aren't you? We know you have a reward. Fine, take this thing. Obtain Dirty Cloak. Uh, I'm going to give it to Selif. Wait. Drek. I'm going to give it to Drek. Reduces chance of poison and blind. So yeah, that's a little secret item you can get. I would go to Bangle to buy stuff, but um, I'm really trying to not interact with him for the little, for the one line of dialogue it changes. But you know what? There is another way to get potions in part one. Bangle does sell like an item that increases your agility among other things, but you know what? We can buy some kids meals. We can see uh, workers who died on the job were legally required to put this. Low credits. Play place down below. We have Wick Modeled are now responsible for any injuries received at en at or entering the Wick Modeled play place. If your child is injured, maimed, or disappears with no trace, you forfeit all ability to blame Wick Modeled. Let me save here. So we can use the kids' meal, find a toy, and also a burger. Oops, sorry. Let's open another one, find a toy, and also a burger. I didn't get lucky. 
so we don't get the um we don't get a deluxe toy today but you know that's fine burgers are a nice item they heal 50 percent of your hp so you know pretty good so normal potions like better for tezka and leonard because they don't have normal potion heals 300 but i think Selif and tezka i think i'm gonna go here yeah, Selif benefits more from the burger, and Drex about even. I think it depends on Drex's level. Uh, we got two Nerk shell pieces, and uh, we don't have any Kobold horns, but I think we'll get more of both of those later, but we're good right now. I'm not... Ooh, wait, never mind. This is an important combat to do. Silkworms are a rare enemy, and their whole thing is that they will run from battle, but if you defeat them... I said if you defeat them... There we go. Uh, let's try to get this guy poisoned. I'm going to try to build up my character's TP a little bit in this fight, and then I'll go back to the Oasis. To just fully stock up, because I think I'm ready to take on, actually, the boss of the map. Of the part, I mean. There we go. 45 XP, you get a Remora and Silk. The game had a load, I don't know why. Uh, Remora and Silk is very nice. It sells for, I think, like 100 gold. Of course, I don't think you can. S you might be able to sell a Wick model. I don't remember. If you can, then that's good. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to. I would go for more, but I'm actually going to just run. So I'm going to try. I'm going to make an attempt. It might not work out at a level four finish. I think I've done level four before. But you know. You it skips the entire rest of the dungeon. It's a small dungeon, so it's not that big of a skip, but you know. So we got this guy, Kobold. Maybe he's bald. That makes sense. We're gonna just skip this right now. Honestly, I probably should have went through it. I'll go through it if I die. Otherwise, if you really want to know, go go on and play the game yourself. That's all I can say. Let's go get Tezka a potion right away, heal him back up. I'm gonna go for the double taunt cell of Drek strat today. Mostly because the other two are constantly getting beat up. I'm also gonna go for the dual attack. Because I would love to get Kuzgar poisoned. Like, I would adore to get the poison off. Of course, every time, like, every, like, 10% HP he loses, he summons another Kobold. So you gotta be careful of that one. We did get the poison, so that also means every time poison goes off, he will be summoning more and more of them. He's only increased his defense one, so I'm gonna go for more dual attacks. Yep. You get a little scene, and this means he summoned the last one. I think it's around 50%? I think at 50... He summons. But it's a whole risk. You can take him out slowly or quickly if you go quick. As you can tell, the battle quickly gets chaotic. There's so many enemies attacking you every turn, it's hard. And they're just spamming all these attacks. Kuzgo are spamming Cobalt Pride to make them stronger. But he's almost dead. So we do another hit. He's probably so freaking close. I think we just need to get Drek alive a little longer to get one more attack in. And we'll be fine. Drek died, never mind. Seleph isn't able to even attack. 
Okay, yeah, he just did- he only took 20 damage, so yeah, he's at 1 HP now, and we killed him. Easily. This fight's a very RNG-heavy fight, but, you know, it's a fun one. I like it. Got four Kobold Horns. Everyone's level five. Urgh. I- I could still fight. Give it up, man, you can barely stand. No, I can never give up. I have to protect my brethren. We don't want to keep fighting you. We don't want to kill more of your brethren. Just tell us about the fruits of the gods. Those things, I don't know anything. Tesca? Tell us what you know. I don't know anything. Tell us what you know. Tezka! I said I know nothing. Final warning. Or what? You'll kill me just like my mother? Deep, deep cut, honestly. I like that line a lot. This one, this scene took me a while to write, honestly. Because I didn't know how I wanted to take it. I know what it means to be hated by society, but that doesn't excuse his actions. You may think I'm a villain, but how many lives do you think he'll take if we let him live? Do you want that blood on your hands? Well. So big decision. You can kill him or you can say, no, we're not going to kill him. We're going to let him kill. So yeah, you can, you do get to kill him. There you go, we have now entered endgame territory of, um, oh wait, I forgot, um, minor thing. Well, we can still enter combat in the desert, so if we wanted to, we can. Uh oh. I will. I will actually do this fight. At least we're almost done with uh, part two. Or part one, I mean. I don't know why I said part two. We're al we're almost there. We'll just ice this guy. Now you have to just be careful. The little sliver these guys got left. But Drek can one shot him, and then just one HP. There we go. Um, the reason I'm going back, the game kind of doesn't really persuade you, as you could tell by me walking away. But now there's no more enemies in here, so you know, this group is gone. Meaning, we got free reign to grab all the items in here. Which, which is nice. There's a couple items, so you know, if you go the full path, you get a burger, a nerd shell piece. Um, I think this one right here it has a kobold horn again. Why the kobolds are keeping one of their horns in a chest? They got some silk. I don't have an answer for that, but you know, pretty cool, pretty cool. This is the main way into the boss room. I say main way, but I think most people go this, the secret route. There's also, um, uh, there's also other dialogue if instead of taking the shortcut then you fight the kobold horde and then take it, or you just come from the other side in general. So lots of options there, lots of options. I think we're almost done. Ooh, more silkworms. Never mind, they ran away. Let's just run away then. There's no point in doing the fight if there's no silkworms, I feel like. It's not worth fighting one nerd. They don't give that much XP. So we can get, we got 50 gold. We can give another one. We got a pretty stone. We got 150 gold, 250 gold. And then we get Merchant's Boon, finally. This increases magic defense by five. I'll give it to Selif. Actually, I'm going to keep the Kiss Meal toy. I'll give this to Tesca. 
Merchant Boon lowers all your stats, I think, by 15%, but it doubles gold gain, which Loki isn't the most commonly useful item. A lot of enemies don't drop gold, they drop items you sell for gold. <clears throat> but that's fine. In the future, I probably will throw more enemies that drop gold. I think part four is going to have a lot of that, but now we have four shell pieces. We can buy a Nurk shield and a Nurk plate. The shield's a good weapon for Selif if you are fighting a lot of physical and not as many magic attacking enemies, because you see that's a big defense buff, but at the cost of magic defense. The Nurk plating just gives a defense buff, which I'm going to give instead of the kids meal toy and I'll give the other kids meal toy to probably uh, Leonard honestly I don't want to give it the Drek because he's going to be taking damage because of the cactus anyway now I think I've covered a lot of this I'm going to buy... I'm going to buy one more burger, I think. Yeah, nice. I would like... I just want another kid's meal toy, I think. And also a burger, but I want to save some money for part two, because I want to spend it in the part two shop. Of course, you can also get a lot more money if you do the Nerg Lady quest, but I am purposefully skipping that quest this time. We also have another skit in here. Let's do the skit, though. We can do the skit. So, Leonard, you've been in this town for a while, right? I've been here for around a month now, I'd say. You play songs at this bar, right? Ooh, play me a song. Yeah, play us a song, Leonard. I'm, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Why is that? You see, the bartender here is a fan of my work. Cause my song's derivative. No taste that one. Aww. Hey, I heard that. S sorry. How about the other people? Do they enjoy it? Depends. My music is in a quiet taste. And some people can get really violent. Must be tough being a bard. Don't get me wrong. I love playing music. I wouldn't trade this for anything else in the world. Little, little characterization. It's pretty nice. If you talk to um, Professor Owl, you get some uh, information regarding the fruit of the gods. Like, basically what the party learned. Anything more? Uh, is there anything else? Oh, so one thing is if you spare Kuzgar and then talk to N, or the Dark Elf, I'm used to actually calling him N, which we'll find out why in a little bit. But if you go to... If you talk to him after you spare Kuzgar, you get a tiny little event that has a minor difference later. But... I killed Kuzgar, so I can't get that event. So we're just gonna rest and good morning, everyone. Oh, those beds were awful! My neck hurts so much! Really? I thought they were quite nice. Did any of you find a note in your room this morning? Can't say I did. Nothing besides letters from the adoring public. Did Leonard actually get a letter? Who knows? Did Leonard purposely mention the coconut in the Stelif like Oasis skit? Who knows? Did you get a note, Tezka? What did it say? It just said, remember our deal. Say a word and you're dead. How frightening. Who would say that? Why threaten us? Are you guys forgetting about that assassin from earlier? Did it have a name on it? No name, just the letter M. Anyway, let's not miss that boat. The docks are at the south end of the town. And we get a little thing. We get all the nergs back. I was so worried about my darling until he came back la last night. I'm going to hire someone to polish his cell. It's all sandy. Because we didn't do the quest, that dialogue's different. Like, the dialogue changes a little bit. Um... Kind of think. I think we're good. I think we're actually good to move on. I'm gonna make a save. Tickets, please. Here you go. That's good. Go on and board the boat. We'll be the party soon. Wait, I smell a creature on you. Are you trying to bring a nerg on the ship? So we are. So we are. 
There's a permit that won't slide. Let it go and I'll let you on. Goodbye, little buddy. The nerd runs away. That's why I didn't want to do the Nerg Lady quest because you cannot get that scene, that little scene, if you do the Nerg Lady quest. Well, that should be everything unpacked. Where are we going again? Pristella! I've never been there, but I've heard countless stories of it. I read that Pristella is the leading nation of technology. This will also be my first time visiting there. About you, Tesco. For one, the town we are heading to is Elysia. It's a populated port town, and two. This won't be my first time in Pristella. I saw you've been there before. Tell us one of your stories. It's a long story and not one I feel like disclosing right now. Aw, oh, don't be gloomy. I'm gonna go outside and get some fresh air. I'll go too. I want to meet some of our fellow passengers. I guess I'll do the same. What about you, Tezka? I'll house soon. I'll just need a moment. Welcome to the SS Benefer and welcome to Tezka Unhooded. There he is. This is what Tezka looks like. More referencing to the Campaign Zero that took place 10 years previously. Alright. I'm sorry if I'm going fast at some points. Just take it as motivation to download and play the game yourself, honestly. Which... Of course, I made the game, so I'm going to recommend that you do that. But, um... Yeah, I, I just would really appreciate it. I, I need more people to play my game and just... So I can make it better with feedback. But we got, um... It's just Tezka in the party. We can still enter the journal. Just looking around my inventory. Okay, okay. So the nerd doesn't get removed from your inventory. I got I see, I see. If I had to guess, I actually know why this happened. I had an issue where the event wasn't playing if you had the correct nerd in your inventory. So I'm assuming I changed it so it checks if you have like the right nerg for the side quest but it doesn't remove that nerg we got there are mountains that a samurai must climb those are just words i choose to live by i am the traveling samurai the pleasure is yours that's a nice katana you got there can you tell me about it this is my blade the killer of 1000 men got that name through my travels once i was able to fade once i was able to defeat an entire bandit camp simple handedly hmm I feel like he isn't telling the truth, but let's entertain him for now. It must be incredibly well to be in such great shape. Do you know where I can get one? Sadly, I cannot help you with that. Family secret. All I can say is that we get our blades, our lifelong partners, at, the com at our coming of age ceremony. That is fan favorite character, um, self-throwing ice cubes at seagulls. Don't be a party pooper. Pooper. Tezka, look at their faces. Can you not feel the joy coming from them? This is fan favorite character, the traveling samurai, also known as Koi Man. He totally got that from the movie. Those are words are true to live by. I am the traveling samurai. The pleasure is yours. Did you also board from Remora? I would not step a single fin into Remora. Desert here is a death sentence to us fin folk. Board back in the eastern archipelago. Interesting. My name is Selef. May I have your name? My name is of no importance. I am simply a traveling samurai. Oh, come on, tell me. It is of no importance. Do not ask again. Or what? You're gonna attack me with that katana? What? No, I could never hit a lady. Oh, really? I have no problem with beating you up. Selif is an agent of chaos. Tezka's here, so you can, like, talk to the party. You can go in the journal. And you can get their opinions, so... Thank the gods, we are no longer Remora. I do not know how much longer I could, I could have lasted. It's refreshing to be away and on the sea, but it could be prettier. No crystal mermaids and not enough shiny things. Pan I think we got, um, what? I think Tezka has something interesting. Tezka sure seems to be thinking a lot recently. Is he still thinking about Kuzgar? It is a bit late to regret our decision. We can only hope that we made the right choice. So, of course, the journal changes if you killed Kuzgar or spared him, of course. Uh, 
get to the next part? Can you believe it, Sela? A real deal samurai! Do you think he'll sign my loot? You should be careful. What if he traps it up instead? What, what would he? I don't know. Swap character. You want to be either Drek or uh, Leonard so you can get this. Or it go up. You can see like the lower side of the boat. Like you see that guy there. The sign, do not bother the captain except in case of emergency. We enter the captain's deck, look around. We get a bucket. Do I want to know what this is used for? What are you doing? Is it some sort of trade ledger? I have a feeling touching this is a one-way ticket to the ocean floor. A bed. I guess the captain sleeps up here. A lot of, lot of things to interact here. Talk to them. Aha! Are you the captain of the ship? Are you Benefer? I am the captain of... But my name is Captain Blake Storm, not Benefer. What are you even doing in my cabin? My friend and I just want to see who is manning the ship. Though I must ask. Now... Why is the ship called the SS Benefer? It's simply what the ship was called when I bought it years ago. No more than that. Never felt like renaming the vessel. Now you will leave me alone. Ah, uh, we have one more question. Have you heard of the Fruits of the Gods? Eh, never heard of them. Doesn't sound like something I'd know anyway. Come back, we need to know how to defeat a Kraken. A Kraken? Mind if I ask about that story? Just get out. Don't make me turn you into bait and make sure you don't mess with the birds. It's called foreshadowing. It's a narrative device. Of course, sir. I'm sorry. We'll be going now. <laughs> well, that was a waste. You're telling me, chum. I got it. Let's get the others and do some quests. Why don't we just relax? We had a busy day yesterday. Oh, come on, my chum. We might learn some valuable information or get some amazing rewards. Fine, I guess I'll come along then. You're just going to do them anyway. Thank you, Trek. You really are a swell guy. Smile. So as you can tell, over the course of part one, even though it was, what, night, like one day, the party's now a little bit closer. They're starting to learn about each other and all sorts of things. You could talk to these guys, but it's like, hey, can I ask a favor? You see that, Trek? A quest already revealed itself. Hold on a second. We should get the others before we go starting quests. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry, madam, but we will return once we find our companions. Just to prevent you from uh, starting uh, the quest without all four. Ah, uh, hello there. What brings you to this magnificent vessel? Oh, um, I'm going to the College of Elysia with my pangolin, Porgo. A pangolin? May I see your majestic pet? Sure, just be gentle. Of course. Wow, look at this little guy. Angry face. I don't think Porgo likes you very much. Oh, past Porgo needs to hear one of my songs. Bold, angry face. Ow, maybe not. Well then, I'll be making my exit. I'll be seeing you in Porgo. <coughs> I had a thing with, um, I'm sorry my cough came on mic. I thought turning away would prevent it, but I guess not. Um, I had an obsession with pangolins for a little bit, so I wanted to add one to, um, that was not in the original part two. But now we can talk to Selif and we can, um, we can get her added. Um, special scene. Well, not special, but... Since you are either going to be controlling Drek or Leonard, these are it's a bit hidden, but you can talk to... You can bring Tezka into the group with Selif, or Selif into the group with Tezka in the lead for a little rarer dialogue. Um, now we can pick up some quests. So we can talk to her, and she's like, oh, you're for free? Yes. Do you have an exciting quest for us? Oh, good. Can you go grab me something from my room? Why don't you go? I would, yeah, I would, but you see my knees totally busted. The stairs are gonna kill me. Anyway, it's a green box. The code is 0674. Wait, what room are you in? Oh yeah, it's the room. Oof. Useful play test. See, every time you play test your game, this is a hit. This is a dev thing. Every time you play test your game. 
You're going to find more things to fix every single time. You look pretty strong. Are you an adventurer? Bah! Close. I was a mercenary, though I'm retired. I got a nice little place in Sings Water I'm heading to. What about you? What brings you here? We're heading to the Prestella to meet with an employer's colleague. Ah, you a mercenary too, then, lass. You might have get better gear. That dress won't protect too much. Why, my dress is perfectly fine. My shield does all the protecting I need. Cool off, lass. I didn't mean to hit a nerve. I'm just offering some advice as a seasoned veteran. Why, thank you very much, but I think it'll be just fine. Hm. Note about Selif is that she does not use contractions. Unless she's, like, like, caught off guard or is, like, you know, like, feeling very angry, very happy, that sort of thing. She'll slip and use one. But she typically doesn't. You look pretty strong, you adventurer. Same line here. You're trying to leave you to meet with a professor. He has the information we see. Information, eh? Tell, tell me, what are you looking for? I might know something. You can decline. Sorry, but my quest is a secret. My chums would be most upset if I go around shouting about it. But uh, that's a smart move, kid. It's hard to know who to trust in this business. Anyway, good luck on your secret quest. Another typo. Oops. Alright, let's move on. I'm starting to run out of steam, so I'm sorry if I'm going to be a little more low energy. On my personal streams, I typically last two hours and I have to push for three. Um, let's go pick up this quest. So, in this part, there are five main quests and, like, one optional one. Like, fully optional. Every other quest is, for the main five, you have to do three of them to progress. This is just, you know, to give us some... To make it so you have to do some, since there's not really... This is the most non-linear part, as in it's the smallest part. There are mountains that a samurai must climb. Mr. Samurai, sir, is there any way we could help you? Why, yes, I'm feeling quite peckish. Could you grab, get me some food and drinks from the mess hall? Nah. Well, you see, we are, we are some very busy people. And let me die? I say you will go get me my usual, please? All right, all right, we'll go get you a drink. Sheesh, what's his problem? So yeah, if he reviews his quest, he still forces you on it. I thought it was funny. Um... Anyway, th yeah, this is kind of a short section. Honestly, part one and part two were... They take up a third of... I feel like they take up a third. They're going to take up roughly a third of the full game proper. But in my campaign, part one was only a single session of 16. And part two was probably two or three sessions. So, this is like... A quarter, or like 20% rather than... 33 a lot smaller um oh yeah let me go pick up quests so we can go here we can go get a hide and seek quest you gotta find the five kids so you know what i guess it kind of also is like majora's mask i don't even think this was inspired by that i think i just wanted like a, i thought it'd be a nice way to get the player to explore and this one was like, I didn't know where to put, I think, the fifth one. So I was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if one of them was just, like, a sleepy kid? So, like, oh, you talk to them and they're falling asleep. They're like, this isn't even fun. So, like, they go hide. But, like, they just went to bed. You talk to them. They're like, we found you. Oh, you found me. Good job. What was even the point of that? So, you know, fun thing. We got video games. Ecclesia's greatest pastime. And now we unlock that quest. So we can always go find the kids later. But it's easier, I think, just to kind of take care of as we do other content. So we put the code in, but the character gets it wrong. So we put it right. That's because I accidentally wrote this wrong the first time. And one of my playtesters said, you, you typed the code wrong. So I just, I reworked it into the character gets it wrong and then the second character, one of the other characters, like, corrects them. 
you will notice that like if a character's like oh i forgot here's this piece of information or something like that usually it's because i legit forgot and then a playtester noticed it and commented on it so instead of fully reworking it i kind of went with the i feel like a little more comedic where like they forgot and I'm like oh wait i forgot to do this here because if I forgot, then it's like role playing that they forgot. And you get the interesting trinket. What's the interesting trinket again? Increases agility 10%. Pretty good item. Part 1 was like 5% items. Part 2 is um, 10%. Huh, it's locked. One of these rooms has something. Wait, I hear noises on the other side. Yeah, woo! Now that's what I call mahjong. I I don't want to know. That was a funny thing to give an excuse for the doors being locked. We got a bathroom. All the trash can shaking. Aha! You found me. Good lord! Why were you in there? Anything to win. Too bad it didn't work. Saw three more of the kids to find. So yeah, one was in the trash can. You can go search it. You get five gold. Seleth is disgusted. What? What? I have no words, Leonard. I love these. Now let's see. Ah, free lunch. Seleth's disgusted. What's wrong, Seleth? Hungry? You can have some too. I'm gonna be sick. People are being noisy outside, ugh. Um, but yeah, this starts the, um, this part starts the trend of trash cans are searchable and everyone but Seleph is absolutely disgusting and will dig through trash. Specifically, Leonard and Drek are huge into it while, um, Hezka has, won't do it in public typically. We gotta, oh, can you smell the romance? See, some of these sailors have feelings for each other. A quest? Everyone, maybe you could help these sailors out. Hold on, you gotta let the love be on its own. It'll find a path. Oh, it's always been a goal of mine to help two chums in love. Perhaps in our timeline you did. Doesn't seem like they're willing to say anything regardless. Interesting thing, this NPC's interesting. Um, originally... One of the, there was going to be six main side quests. However, and one of them was going to be a romance side quest where you would have to like get the information to find which pairing is the best one. And it was going to depend on every character was going to get a different response. And that would give you points towards learning each romance option. And then you would like end it by picking one of the two. However... I realized it was really hard to write a romance side quest, so I decided against it. And instead I had this NPC Um I lost my zone of thought. Um I decided instead to have this NPC reference it. But, like I said, that's not in it anymore. Where did I leave it again? It's not in the matter, sir. Probably shouldn't bring passengers into this. I could use the help, though. Hey, Jess, would you mind going downstairs to the storage room for me? I get some supplies for limbo tonight, but I'm too busy. Or, I'm busy here in the mess hall. We get the storage room key. He says in the northeast section. We got a couch here. Who who brought a couch all the way to the mess hall? Do you see who did this? No. Could have been anyone, my good sir. Well, almost everyone. Obviously, it wasn't me. I can make sure it wasn't you. Look at my arms, sir. I do one damage to enemies. One. Do these arms look like they can move a couch? Jeez, I get it. You're too pitifully weak. No need to shout, man. 
this was a fun one to write because there's two paths for if you say yes or no. It must have been one of those troublesome children. Where are their parents, actually? They're passionate. I don't know. I think I like specifically... Uh, I think it's Ted's Kano. They must be in this very base. They could be you. They could be me. They could even be... Be? Be who? <laughs> Anyone, really. What was even the point of that? Oh, of course, you wouldn't understand such a reference. Only real gamers like me would. Welcome to Tezka being a gamer. Tezka is an is a gamer, and it gets revealed in part two. Oh, yo, Anthony, you're here. Awesome. But yeah, romances are so freaking hard to write. I had to pass on it. You haven't caught me yet? Alright. And now we gotta test them. This used to be really easy because of the setting, but I made it harder because now they're fully random moving before it was weighted random, so they stay around the same area. The issue was it was the area the event start like started in, not when it started free movement. So they would 9 times out of 10 run towards you because they were weighted to run at you. We got another one. Uh, this NPC is a little hard. What do you want? Samurai wants as usual. Alright, it'll be 500 gold. 500? We don't have that kind of money. Then no food or drink for the samurai. Let's go get the money from... Technically, we do have the money, but of course the party's not going to want to spend 500. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute, though. There's more to do. More to do. Like this? I like Celeph's line. I'm not touching this. I'll melt. Uh, that is a reference to? It's a heated item, so Celeph is unable to equip it. So I'll give it a direct so he has a little more attack. Oh my gods. How are you able to be in here? Dang, I never thought you'd look here. I saw one more kid to find. I can interact with this. Um, everyone gives another line for that. I'm going to be a little more less detail oriented, I think. Because I, I am running out of energy bad. Want to hear a fun fact? Then no fun fact for you. If you say no, you say yes. It's socially acceptable to not wear pants. I mean, most people would be wearing them, but no one's forcing them. Key Ecclesia wore a lore. Nobody has to wear horses. Uh, nobody has to wear horses. There's there's three key lore details. You don't have to wear pants. Horses don't exist. Um, planes don't exist. Those are the three core aspects of this modern fantasy world. No horses, no airplanes, and no pants. We got a crack. This is where the couch was originally. We got um everyone's favorite sailor. I can't wait to reach the mainland. Boxman pre-order, here I come. Hey, you're not supposed to be here. And you talk, you get a quest. This is a fun little puzzle. It's a push puzzle. You use the purple tile to reset the room. There's three rooms, so we can push these as a little strength puzzle like Pokemon. This was really fun to make. I, I really wanted to try to play with non or like combat, like side quests in the game. That's why I'm um, part two has very little combat it only has two fights in the like two fights and only one of them is required i'm going to be doing this kind of like a quick version because i know how to do this quickly um but yeah i want to focus on not having combat for a part since i thought it would be really um interesting to just make a very so just see what else I can do with RPG Maker, since this is my first RPG Maker game. That's why some parts are probably a bit, uh, but I'm a big fan of it. I'm, this is really, this was really fun to make, this whole game so far. I'm excited to release part three and, um, when are we going to be releasing part three? Part three should be coming out 
Um, my goal was before the end of the year, but it should be coming out very early in 2024. One room left. Originally, um, this room is interesting. This is the fourth room I made. I had four rooms, but I ended up cutting the third one because I wasn't as big of a fan. So, the intended way to do this room, though, I think it's something like this. So, like, this block is locked, and this block is locked. However, if I reset the room, this is a funny unintended thing. You could come from the top instead. I don't think it changes that much, actually, but it's just... It wasn't originally supposed to be something you could do. Also, we got, um, these blocks were originally urns, but I had, I did some finessing with some, uh, you can push that one in there. I did some finessing with some textures to make these stone blocks that I'm actually a pretty decent fan of. And you push them into the hole and you can walk on it. Um, you might notice that there is a item in that corner right there, that blue box. That is a secret item. Well, it's not that secret, it's obvious. It is an item used in part three. I gave it a use. It had no use originally, so it was just like, a question mark question mark thing but then I I added something to use it for so you could get it I'm going to skip out because it's not important in this playthrough since I'm not doing part three but if you do part three it is worth grabbing and see every time you do a quest you get some XP the characters leveled up to six sell if got icicle smash what else did everyone get Ice Cold Smash is a, I think it does about tr probably a good triple damage of ice or double the triple, but it has a 55 hit chance. It represents how Celif in the like original tabletop game was, um, she would usually fail her magic rolls. Leonard got strong strength, so now he can buff people's attack. And Drek got Flex, which gives him TP for some MP. And then Tezka gets Inverse Strike. This is one of my favorite skills because it's it uses its the enemy's attack rather than Tezka's attack. And it interestingly is... Um, I feel like there's a word for anti-synergize, but like... Opposite of synergizes with Scratching Melody, since so Scratching Melody lowers the enemy's attack, therefore lowering the damage you get through an inverse strike. So we can also go around, we can talk to um, her, Lyria. Come back if you help both Argus and Crust. So that's a little side quest thing. Mention, hey, you didn't hear from me, but I think we might actually be in a video game. What do you mean? Think about it. How else do you explain? Oh no, they're on to me. You didn't see anything. That was a fun little scene. I liked writing that. I had to figure out what to do with that sailor. And I thought that'd be a funny way to take it. Um, you know what? While we're here, let's go in here. The storage room. This is a fun area to make. It's a little stealth section. You get energy crystal. There's some loot here and there. Little Nurg, if you get caught by a Nurg, it's like, Scree! Oh, why is he so angry? Brings you here. Explains that the party doesn't want to hurt them. So it's just, um... Leaving them alone. One thing you'll notice with stealth sections is that I... I'm getting better with the enemy detection. The part one, like, enemy, det like, character detection is really rough around the edges. It's like a six or five tile radius or something like that and it's just a little awkward this one is a little awkward since they do have to in, like physically touch you but they only see three tiles i believe in front of them in like a cone shape rather than all around 
in part three, it's the same thing where there's a stealth section and the character, the enemies see in a cone shape. However, the second you enter their line of sight, they start an event rather than having to chase you. And also they have a light that shows you their range. So if you go into the light, you'll enter the hitbox. Hey, are you all right? Feels cold like metal. Is this a robot? I think Drek has a funny line here. Hey, are you all right? Feels cold like metal. What is this? Here's a machine of some kind. Since Drek comes from a world that doesn't have robots. Got a pretty stone. Ooh, we gotta wait a little second for this guy to pass. We got a moving barrel over there. Um, we got a glowing thing. You grab this. Energy claws. Energy weapon. Very rare. Note on the barrel to be delivered to the Novula City Weapons Convention. Weapons Convention. Maybe we can check that out for near Novula City. It's a funny thing called foreshadowing. It's the largest city in Pristella. It's the largest city in a. It's also the largest in Ecclesia, second only to the Malachite capital city. Press train will take us there. So some lore. Malachite is a huge area, but it's not as large as um. Okay, so that is something. The nerd can see you through the walls, but if he's going to struggle to get me because he doesn't have the best pathfinding. He's going to try to take a direct route, but he doesn't realize he has to go all the way around. It shouldn't cause issues though. He'll just be a shortcut out later. Unless we're going to fall behind this guy, get to the barrel. Ooh, why hello there! Oh, you can see him chasing me actively. Whoa, the barrel's alive! I run Bingle's shop in Almir. That's me, Bingle. Why are you here and not in Almir? Oh yeah, I forgot it was talked about, but Almir is the town in the continent where Mora you start in. I don't think Almir was actually mentioned specifically. Smoochums, my nerd, is taking care of that. Now, Bingle has a favor to ask of you. Bingle requests that you do not tell anyone Bingle is here. Maybe I'll send the Swede in the deal. Bingle knew you would say that. Bingle has been hard at work on making a weapon out of scrap metal. Bingle gifts it to you. Obtain scrap metal. It's a shield. Our deal is sealed. Come find Bing. <sighs> Typo. You can also talk to him. As you can tell, the music changes. This is Bangle's theme apparent I made. Um, you're able to buy potions, MP potions, and Bangle's Bangle, which increases your agility. This is why I wanted to save up my money, because I want to buy a couple of these and a potion. I want to give these to Tezka. Because I want Tezka to move as often as he can. I want him to be like acting the most. This increase, I would actually increase the others, but I'm going to wait until I get more of the items. I'm going to also run through this guy. Got the limbo supplies, and now, so I don't have to walk out, I can take this to just skip the whole walk back, because I grabbed all the items I need. <sighs> now we can hang, hang back the limbo supplies. Doo -doo -doo -doo. We got an elven magic crystal. He's like, did you lock the door? Of course we did. Did we lock it? I don't remember. This is so you can enter that area in the future. Also, the event with Bangle, what, that was the event. Like, if you don't talk to him, he introduces himself. But if you do, Drex like, oh, how are you, man? Or something like that. Um, what's left? What's left? We still have a little more left. We can go give this guy the usual, or because credit card. Um, here's an interesting one. Do we want to give the trinket back? I like the line of dialogue for not giving it back more. But I'm going to... I'm not going to give it back because I do like the line of dialogue more. Nope, it's a similar but completely different trinket. Oh, then did you get mine? 
Sadly, it was mysteriously gone when we checked. The box was empty. Are you sure you brought it on board? I, I was sure I did. Thank you anyway. So you can lie to her and uh, keep the item. If you give it back, you get, instead of the interesting trinket, you get, um, you get, I think it's the curious trinket, which is similar, but it increases your magic attack by 10% instead. I think I would have preferred that one, if I'm honest. I think Selif needs magic attack more than anyone else needs agility, but they're both good items. Like, it's just my opinion that Selif wants magic attack more than, like, Tezka would want more agility, but they're both valid options. And this is the last child. They're looking out on the adventure. We can go back to the room and we get our reward. The kick me sign. Hey, you call this a gift? Everyone scatter. Okay, it's an XP. Everyone's level seven now. If we come back, the kids are here. We got an adventure kid who wants to hear about our adventure. Drek talks about saving a princess from a tower. The comments on how it's generic. We talk, I think, with Tezka. Oh. He comments like, like, you scream adventure because of like the Turksville. He has a previous adventure, but he doesn't want to share it right now. Um, got this one who talks about the engine. If you talk with Drek. You get some more insight on what Jerk doesn't know. All sorts of things. Um, what else? I think we just have the Koi quest and also the Lyria, like, bonus quest. I will say there is a secret route, like, um, you get a secret event if you don't do the, if you do part of the Koi Man quest, if you get his credit card and then never do the rest of the quest you get a secret interaction in part three i can tell you that one this was like a reference to like ed ed and eddie and cartoons and like the vile like someone does like off screen you hear all the sound effects let me get the traveling samurai as usual i like i think i like celefs Oh god, this smells so bad. What is in here? Why is this happening to me? I want to perish. I think Leonard gives also a negative reaction, but Drek and Tezka give positive reactions because they like it, the smell. Like Tezka is this super serious guy, but he's also just kind of he's also kind of gross and he's a gamer, which I think actually are synonyms. I can say that because I'm a gamer. We got your usual. Hmm. I feel much better now. Can you give me back? Can you give me back my credit card? Just making sure that was worded right. Here you go. I must apologize though. I can get irritated when I'm hungry. It's unbecoming of me. So we apologize. So it's okay. How about I make it up to you by telling you one of my stories? One hour later. Stella falls asleep. I think this is a recent change that now they have these sprite like sleeping sprites when you do this event. And then a quick flash, then in a flash, quick as lightning, I strike down Bazarus the Corrupted. Have you even paying attention to this awesome tale? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I was totally listening the whole time. Good, because I won't tell it again. Now, excuse me, I should head to my room. Gain some XP. We didn't even get a reward though. Instead, we get notes on the traveling samurai. Uh, if we talk to her again, we get, um, Mima's gonna be so upset with me. You get a different line if you give it back, and it gives more insight on the Mima. It's like one of those things where both, you need to do both paths to get the full story, but it's such a minor story anyway, so it's not that important. But it's a nice touch. I wanted to put a lot of those small touches. Yeah, Salif is so sick of hearing his, like, little spiel. 
she wants a reward. <laughs> he just runs away. I forgot he does that. Hey, get back here. I love this little portrait I made of Sela. Like, she's got the blue glowing aura, like how Drek has the yellow aura when he's angry. But, like, Sela has these sparkles and snowflakes because it's an icy aura. Really big fan. Um. Oh, wow. We've been going for two and a half hours. Wow. We're almost done. We're almost done. Creston Fargus, she wants a favor. So yeah, like this is a hint that she was the romance quest and she was gonna originally have you like try to figure out if um, Fargus or Crust, like how they felt about her and depending on who was in the lead, you would get a different answer. Like they would respond differently and that was the point system you get. I just wanna know what it says. It's in from her work with an interesting request. I'll need to think on that one. Quest. Nothing you need to concern yourselves with. So that's more like remnants of the romance quest. Since it was actually Illyria has a I think Lyria has a crush on like kinda has feelings for both of them. Um Crust and Fargus are quite close. They're like kind of I think like a more brotherly love. Like that siblinghood. Um I think part of their characterization was like Crust feels a bit inadequate compared to Fargus because he doesn't have magic and he's like, like, oh man, you're so cool. You can do all these things with magic. And Fargus is like the same thing with Crust because he's like, oh, you're so strong. I wish I was strong. So like, they, they both like want, they both like slightly, they feel inadequate compared to each other, but it's. I never got to develop it more for them, but it's like going was going to be in like a positive way. Like they support each other and like, oh yeah, like Crust would totally like spot Fargus and workouts and Fargus would probably teach, help Crust learn basic spells. I've been unintentionally keeping Seleth the main character because I think a lot of the small interaction, like, oh, Seleth has a good one. Let's put Leonard in the front. Let's go tell Lyra we deliver the letters. I'm not thirsty right now. I might make these set like they sell things in the future. Since there are slot machines in um part three that you can buy like drinks from, I might. But that isn't or not slot machine, vending machines, but I think those are supposed to be like those were supposed to be like the soda fountain type of things. So maybe not. I'll have to think on that one. They wouldn't sell anything that uh, Bangle doesn't. I feel like I'd rather encourage the player to buy it with Bangle. For the Bangle's Bangle. We deliver the letters. Set from tonight. Well, to come to the break room tonight to find out. Thank you again for the help. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I know what you mean, but these guys seem nice. They'll be fine. Has because of course a little suspicious, but you know. But we've done it. We've done all the quests. Now we can go to bed and rest. I forgot to mention journals a physical item. I see that was a very successful questing day. Yeah, but we didn't even get to relax. We spent the whole day helping people. Trek is right. I would like to spend the rest of our trip relaxing. Oh, but I'm sure we could do even more quests tomorrow. Leonard. Ah, uh, what is it, Tesca? We've done enough. Let's we'll save our energy for when we get to Bristella. Oh, fine, old chum. I guess I could write some songs instead. Attention all passengers. Limbo will begin shortly. Please come to the second deck to participate. Limbo, come on, chums. Let's go play. Everyone sighs. I try to emulate their size difference in their self is like I got confirmation on some height. Selif is like four six. Drek is probably like seven and a half ish. Leonard's like five eight, I believe. Tezka, I, I don't have actually a full height confirmation on them yet. But now we can go over here, do some limbo. You guys made it, the game's about to start. Is everyone ready for limbo? 
You recognize this is the guy who is in the basement? He technically appears in part one because that's a different character. He's reused. Looks like it's our turn. Let's have Stella play. Use left and right arrow keys to move the bar. Try to keep it in the green area of the center by the time the timer reaches zero. It's in the green area you win. Ready, set, limbo. I'm going to lose it for s speed running. Ooh, better luck next time. Here's your participation trophy. Sniffle. The scouter here hit the hay. Sniffle. But the sailor said they have a prize for us. That's a contraction. I'll mention that. Uh, limbo sell it. Then we can go check that out. Okay, before we do, I want to ask Limbo Guy something. Hey, Limbo Guy, can I have the pole? What? Why? Because um, I need it. As far as monk training, you don't want him to dishonor his family, do you? Of course not, but how do you have Limbo without it? Well, just let me borrow it for the night and I'll give it back tomorrow. Huh, Alright. Get the Limbo pool. I say that, but you can still play Limbo. A bit of a, a hole, but also... Well, maybe he's... You know what? Headcanon, Drag puts the pool back on the pool because he does have it. I do want to win it, though. Even though there's no reward. I wanted to lose it because I feel like the losing rewards, like, most people are probably going to do it. Did I lose anyway? I lost anyway. I can do it, I can do it. I was gonna say, I feel like most- I've, I've never really seen someone lose it, but I haven't seen it played enough and then I just lost it. I can do it though. I did it. I want to do that because I'm a big fan of- this was kind of a bit I like to do is like you do this super small task and you get the biggest fanfare in the world. I think it's really funny so I wanted to implement it with that. By the way, energy cost. You gain more MP at the cost of some of your defense and you're a little faster than the steel claws. Um, I think it's a little fat. Yeah, I think yeah, you get a little more speed at the cost of some of your attack. Same attack debuff as Venom Claws. But instead of poison, you went you target the enemy's magic defense instead. I'm going to equip the steel claws instead though. Um Limbo Pole is just a massive speed boost for Drek. I'm actually gonna equip Linen Log. Um, we're gonna head in here. Um, what are we- okay, I'm gonna change up my equipment real quick. I think I want this. I'll take Limbo Participation for the 10% HP. Uh, we'll take Elven Magic. What else? What else? We have a couple of things. And defense. Mm, I don't think I need it. Um, I tr I'll take. Yeah, I'll take the HP and defense. Drek is, I think, good. We'll give. It's always hard to give, like, Leonard things specifically. We'll give him MP. Uh, agility? Yeah, let's give him the agility one. That's probably a good on him. There we go. You can talk to any of them, and they all get the same thing. Ah, oh, yeah, a good idea to. Oh, I think that's freaking hit. Um, that's a typo. I thought I corrected a lot of those. I thought I corrected a lot of those. Feel 100%. You can fuse, but I can make sure you're in good condition to fight. So we can say no, or we can say ready to fight. We're ready. We're gonna warm up. We're gonna do this. I'm gonna do it first try. 
Then we go for a Scratching Melody. She uses Wolf Roar, so we are all lowered attack too. I'm gonna go for a Crust the Fee. I think I'm gonna focus down Crust. I'm gonna focus, you know what? Everyone's gonna Celif is gonna focus crust, everyone else is gonna focus um Fargus. I'm gonna save Lyria for last, even if that's probably a bad idea. She could be a little hard, but you know, it's fine. Uh, we'll go for a second scratching melody. And then let's go for a wide, a strong attack on Fargus, like hers. Um, just gonna focus. I'm just gonna try this. Hopefully, it works out. Okay, I gotta start healing melody though. I'm gonna do a wide. Yeah, I had a feeling there wasn't that much left. Healing Melody. Press does a Mega Flex, which increases its attack a little bit, so you know what? Let's make use of that. We'll do an Inverse Strike. Knocks him out. Have Cell of Taunt. Lyria has a lot of magic defense specifically, so it's not really worth having Celif use her magic, so it's better to use her MP on taunting and just let her tank. I think her physical defense is also decently high, so I'd rather armor pierce. But I think she has a weakness the fire, fun fact, so strong attack with direction since he has the fire crystal should be the best option right now. Healing Melody, just keep everyone healed up, and you're kind of right as rain. We should be almost done. I don't imagine we're having much left now. That was like a 400 damage. Right? Yeah. So let's just protect. Inverse Strike. I don't want to actually lower her attack right now because Inverse Strike's so good. Okay, Protect did not activate on that hit. That is interesting. I wonder why that attack didn't activate. That's worth testing. I'm gonna have to remember that one for the future. But we won. Level 8, Cell of Flare and Heal. So now she can heal. Hers is a single target in comparison to Leonard's, which is party wide. Tezga learns slow movement so he can make him attack, like activate less. And we get Sailor's Pride, which is a very fun item. Increases all stats by 2.5%. Hmm. I'm going to give this to, I think, Drek. And I will give Tezka. Tooth of Impulse instead. And let's go to bed. And because we got the notes of the traveling samurai, we get Singer to a Thousand Men. Leonard's weapon for this part. And what's that? It sounds like birds. Wait, where is Tesco? He must have already been <sighs> the mess hall. What's wrong with your face? That probably shouldn't be a contraction. I didn't sleep a wink last night. I was writing song lyrics. 
Let's go see what's happening in the mess, all of them. But now we have Singer to a Thousand Men. Decreases your chance of being targeted at the cost of your magic attack, but you give a big agility buff. This is a good one, but sadly it falls into the not good when you get it item path, which I would say is also the magic clause on Tezka. Simply put, um, the fight's coming up. Like, some of these weapons don't have the, the best use cases because of their the enemies you're fighting right when you get them are like not what they're meant to deal with so it seems like someone anger the seagulls so now we are stuck inside until they decide to leave my apologies to everyone they should be hopefully they should hopefully be gone by the end of the day oh i know i know we were all looking for today but with the amount of angry seagulls rampaging it isn't safe hey self do you think it was because you were throwing ice cubes at them I mean, maybe, but they don't have to know about that. There must be something we can do. We don't talk around. You know, we get some information. I always knew they would be back. We must offer someone a sacrifice. Get a little information. Seagulls, oh my god, I still have nightmares from last time. What happened last time? Oh, please don't make me speak of it. He runs away. Or someone brings a couch into the mess hall, to the mess hall, and now seagulls are attacking the boat. Why can't we just have a normal voyage? That's a reference to, um, fun fact, that is a reference to, um, the magic school bus. Got this. Oh no, my worst fears, what do I do? Calm down, it's just some birds. Just some birds? Do you have any idea what seagulls eat? Uh, fish? Exactly! What has to do with anything? I am a thin folk! They will tear me to shreds! Two of them. Oh man, there are no fun games to play inside. Oh come on, don't you kids have the pocket gamer or something? Mom says video games are bad for you. Oh kid, I don't say this lightly, but your mom is an idiot. I think Selith has a fun one. Oh man, there are no fun games to play inside. But the room had game consoles. Why not play some Blarky Party? Mom says video games are bad for you. No, they are not. I play games all the time, and I am perfectly fine. She's not perfectly fine. Um, you know, we talk with Drek. Here's a nice one. Wait, I know that from anywhere. Tezka? Hey. What are you just- Why are you disguised as a traveling samurai? I want to see what I can learn about him. This was the best way. Learn about him? How are you able to do that? My abilities let me glimpse into someone's memory- someone's recent memory when it disguises them. Roughly the last 24 hours of their life. That is frankly terrifying, my good chum. I suppose as long as you don't use it to steal my lyric from me, then I have no issues. I don't need to do that, don't worry. How about I... Then how, then how about you rejoin our party? Of course. Now we can play as the traveling samurai. Isn't that fun? Tesca's traveling samurai in here, and he has a new skill. Samurai Epic Slash, a powerful defense-piercing katana technique. I think I spelled technique wrong. <laughs> I think it has a, it's a Q-U-E, not a C. Using it with claws instead results in a low success chance, so I think it's like a 60% or something. Brother, is that you? Uh, yes. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's I, your brother. Oh, brother, how long has it been? Why I came onto this boat just to see you? Wait, why are you here? Aren't you going to Novula City to become the strongest samurai? Ah, uh, well, you see, I'm, I'm... I am. I'm actually still there. This is a cheap pro projection. I just wanted to check up on you. You're so kind, brother. Don't worry, I'll be there soon. I know you will. Ah, uh, it looks like the cheap projection's fading out. Just remember, brother, believe it! You know, it's called foreshadowing. <laughs> I love how I can do that of like every NPC. I'm like, it's called foreshadowing. You see, every time Novulo City gets mentioned, you're like, I guess we're going to Novulo City. Those things could beat us in seconds, don't you hear them? It's not even our problem. 
How can you say that the people are in need? Of course it's our problem. I don't know about you guys, but I have no intention of staying cooped up all day due to some stupid birds. Everyone, none of us want to spend our glorious day cooped up, so I say we take flight against these birds. Together we will be unstoppable, our might immeasurable. Now who's with me? Going back to sleep. What a nut job. Is he crazy? No way I'm going to be the person who got killed by seagulls. Well, Leonard, that plan didn't work. What now? We just need to do it ourselves. Come on, we can do it. Yeah, let's go then. Fine, I'll go do it. Wait, you will really? You'll come? You'll really help? Of course, we're a team after all. We can have our bard go and kill himself. <laughs> Thank you. You're the best chums a bard could ever ask for. <sighs> I'm trying to think of what was canon in the original part two in the like my tabletop campaign the seagulls happened traveling samurai happened I think the sailors all appeared but they weren't given as much information I remember specifically my players like two of them like Drek and um Tez not Drek Sounds good. Drek and Leonard's player went to get see the captain and they asked all this information about him and then after that I like I gave all the sailors names and stuff and then they never asked for the sailors name but they asked the captain for his name and he never had a name it was funny um I'm going to go save I'm also going to equip the nerd shield because the enemies coming up only deal physical damage, so we don't need the magic defense boon of the Malachite shield. Say we just charge on out there and take down the biggest one. Are you crazy, man? I don't think we last long enough to do that. The seagulls also were cannon. Oh, I know I can block them with my shield. That'll keep us safe. So if I must say that's ingenious. Yep, I am smart, aren't I? Sounds good enough, let's go. Well, are we ready? Whoa, those are some angry birds! Be careful everyone, just find the biggest one. I can block the little ones. That must be the boss. At least it can't get worse. Did you have to say that? Of course, by saying the classic line, we can get a better idea of just how bad the situation actually is. That is ingenious. Don't encourage him. Guys, they seem ready to attack. Then let's do this. Welcome to the second boss. These eagles are looking at me awfully hard, probably because you look like a fish to them. Tezka is more likely to be targeted. It is fully possible for the seagulls to act, like, immediately and kill Tezka. Um, I'm going to showcase the power of the fruits of the gods. Tezka might die if I give it to him. I'm going to give it to Tezka. So now we have this, so let's do a dual attack. Instantly one shots a boss. Um, we're gonna have Self Protect. We're gonna have Drek. Uh, I'm a little worried about some. I don't actually think I need to heal Tezka. I'm gonna try to just beat up this seagull while in case something happens to Tezka. Yeah, as long as Selif is protecting, we don't have to worry about it, but... Dang, I missed a hit. <laughs> so I was gonna keep up the protect. Um, we're gonna go dual attack. So the whole thing with the Fruit of the Gods I want is that they're so limited supply. But as you can see... You can annihilate a boss extremely quickly with one of them. Like, that's a semi-difficult boss, 
but because I used the Fruit of God, Tezuka was able to one-shot two of them instantly, basically. Well, if he didn't miss one of his attacks, he would one-shot the other one. So, it climbs in the seagull for loot. You know, it's funny because one of her trash lines is that she'd rather climb into a corpse and then she climbs into a corpse just for loot. This was a fun port, like, little icon to make of Selif. It took me a while. It was kind of hard. A fruit of the gods! Looks like a Benji is similar to the other one. The color is different, though. For our did say the last one was a fruit of power. Maybe this one's a different kind, like the fruit of music. Paint fruit of question mark. Where did Tezka go? Ah, he's been disappearing a lot recently. Maybe you should take the mess hall. I know all that fighting could work up an appetite. So yeah, you can instantly uh, defeat a boss by using a fruit of the gods. Honestly, for these early playthroughs, like since there's only part one and two in the game, Using the Fruit of Power on, um, a boss is relatively free, since there's not that much content, so it's not the worst, it's just, it is really just, I don't want to fight this boss. Since the game is balanced around minimal or no item uses, like, a good hard, like, hard mode is no items. And, like, probably minimum grind, it's probably no items or... Minimum grinding with items. But like, that's how I kind of balance everything. So items are just, if you use items, you're making the game a little easier. And that's kind of what I wanted since I know a lot of players don't typically use their items in games. Like, you get your super OP sword in like a game, but it has a durability limit. So you don't even use it and you save it for like the last map and you use it like twice. And you definitely could have used it way more across the whole game. So I balanced the- I tried to balance the game around assuming a player was going to do that. Tezka? Look at him, he's so droopy. He looks so sad eating that mac and cheese. That fight must have taken a lot out of him. We should leave him tell the captain the news. We might be able to find him downstairs in the break room. You never have to talk to Tezka here, that's completely optional. You can just go right down to the break room. And just skip it. Also, if you come to the break room before fighting the seagulls, but after act like the this day in game day, you can come down here and spar the sailors like one on one or four on one. And I just put it there in case you need XP. I think if you lose to the seagulls, the party comments on maybe we can find someone to spar with or something. Huzzah, we got a dear, oh, dear pal Tezka. Oh yeah, Tezka did become the traveling samurai for, I think, during the seagull boss. And I think that's where he, and he got completely one shot, I'm pretty sure, in game. In, like, the tabletop campaign. So, realistically, so the canon version is that Tezka just gets knocked out immediately during this fight. We get to rest a little bit. Well, who is ready the party? I guess I see no harm in it. Ah, Tezka, you don't have to stay hooded around us. We're all chumps. Thanks, I'll consider it, Leonard. How's your mac and cheese? It was homey. Now if anyone needs me, I'll be going right to where the most people are and prefer my hit songs. I'm gonna get some grub. I just want to relax and watch the waves. I'll see you later, Tesco. There we go. That is, uh... Yeah, we get that, but, um... Part two, you can kind of go around talking to people, like... You can talk to Drek here, and he's like, Oh, what are you eating? Sour ground beef. This stuff is delicious. So you're a smart one, right? I like to think I am. So what do you think these fruits of the gods are? So we get this little information. Um, and this is important 
if you talk to Drek with Tezka, you unlock a skit in part 3. It's a hidden skit, but it's actually low-key lore important hidden, just for fun. But I also really like the Drek Tezka skit, or the Drek Tezka interaction rather than the Tezka Drek one. Ah, oh, Tezka, just the man I wanted to see. I want to ask you to become me. I can. Why though? I want to see you become as strong as me. Sounds like an interesting experiment. Should be able to. I don't think I found. I've encountered someone I could not fully copy. Awesome. Let's go to a room and try. Ha! Aha! You got me, Tezka. Of course, not only do I gain your strength, but I also more easily predict you. Maybe you should stay as me. I think I'll pass. I'd rather avoid shape-shifting into my allies. We deserve to keep privacy from each other. You make a good point. Still, if we had two of me, we'd be invincible. Now we can switch back to Tezka. I really like that event. I think it's kind of cute how it's like... Drex like, if we had... Drex like, if we had two of me, we could do anything. And I think the line where Tezka's like, I also really like Tezka being like, we all deserve a right, like, deserve privacy. Like, he doesn't want people to kind of like, he doesn't want to talk about his past. So he doesn't, so he respects people's privacy. And he's not going to like turn into his allies to learn about their secrets. Speaking of learning about his ally secrets. He's like, what are you doing up here? I've been meaning to ask about that. What kind of position do you hold in Malachite? Um, well, um, I guess you could say I have a powerful position. Can we not have this conversation right now? I'll stop pressing about it. You know you can trust us, though, right? Of course, it's just a personal matter. More continuation of... Tezka wants to know who Selif is. And just he just wants to know who she is. But he doesn't want to... But I kind of characterize him as he doesn't want to become Selif and just find out himself. Um, I got my phone on vibrate and it's actually the worst experience of my life. I'm turning that off. We also have a little skit here. I like this skit a lot. Is that a game box? They even have... I can see where that typo came from. Have the Storm of War, th the Storms of War Three remake. That one was my childhood. One round would have hurt. Tesca, is that you? Yeah, I love this. I love this so much. Tesca with his RGB eyes, his like gamer headphones with RGB lighting, like. Cheeto dust all over his cloak. Dear gods, what happened to you? There's cheese dust all over your cloak. So? So, your eyes are RGB. Just what have you been doing? How long have you been here for? Playing Storms of War 3, duh, and I've only been here for like three hours. Three hours? Come on, you need to turn that off and get some air. I can't pause it, it's online, idiot. What was that for? for your own good now come inside and get some fresh air ugh leonard reserves the role of mom and unplugs the game console uh i think there's one more thing i want to show of course there's a lot of dialogue like you talk to this person with this party member like even the normal npcs there's a lot of like events but i'm also kind of exhausted so we're going i want to show off one more thing and then i think we're going to call the anniversary um to a close soon i will i'll show off part three a little bit i'll go into part three because i know i talked about it oh tez can i really for yeah okay we already saw this so we can just skip this swap character I'll go into part three and just walk around a tiny bit. I'll show one thing in part three in particular. There's one specific thing I want to show. Got a little skit here though.
This was a really fun skit to animate. Hey, you look thirsty. Hmm, actually, now that you mention, I am pretty thirsty. Let me get you a drink then. Really? Thank you. But you don't have to. It is alright. Just leave it to me. Hmm. A little bit of this. Some Dr. Paprika. I almost forgot this. And of course, some orange. Oh yeah, this looks perfect. Here you go. It is my own special recipe. I've been perfecting it for over 200 years. Oh, thank you. Uh, are you okay? Oh no, he isn't saying anything. Um, maybe I should check his pulse. Oh my god, he's dead. This isn't good. I can't get accused of murder. My reputation will be in shambles. Maybe we could try healing spell? Oh, that was delicious. What did you put in it? Um, it's a secret recipe? Oh well. Thank you so much for that drink. I never felt so alive. I love that skit because it's a lot of like less talking in it and also it was a canon thing Selif did kill him I don't think she cast a healing spell but I think she did almost kill him with the dr with a drink um I think that's all though for part three I want the show specifically though I there is so much different I spent a lot of time writing the dialogue for it but we'll end the night we have now landed at Alicia it is nice to be in solid ground once more. Look at all those tall buildings. Do people live in those? Ah, oh, what fine weather today. Perfect for exploring a brand new land. For Stella, it's been a while. Yeah, now we have to find Particate, find the Particate fellow Professor Owl mentioned. Does anyone have any ideas? I say we just go around talking to everyone. He should be at this port if he's expecting us. Once we can learn about this new city. Even already, after all the searching for a reward I did. Here, take these as thanks for your help with those seagulls. Too bad we never found the one when we got them riled up in the first place. S is Benefer Badge of Valor. What is this ring? It looks like a mood ring. I love those. It's called a vibe ring. It changes color based on the vibe of the surrounding area. Similar magic to a mood ring. I hope you chums don't mind if I take this then. Go ahead. I don't have use for a vibe ring. Oops. Uh, good luck on whatever it is you are looking for. You're always welcome about the SS Benefer. There we go. Welcome to Elysia. If we go into our inventory, we can um, use the vibe ring at any time. And we can get the vibe of whatever area we're in. Um, I forgot to get rid of... Don't worry about Kuzgar. He is a debug NPC. I promise he's not supposed to be here. Uh, hello there! I am Professor Flizwold. That's what we were told one would be waiting for us. Are you in here in place of Particate? Ah, uh, Particate, you say? Why, he's just over there with the short brown hair and glasses. I'm here to get on that says Benefer. I wish to visit for more of the fine ancient artifacts. Thank you. It is no trouble. So we talk to him and we get all oh, you match the descriptions. Professor Owl gave me perfectly. I'm Osseus Particate, researcher of the Fruit of the Gods. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. No mind, let's go to my office at the College of Leisure. Stay close behind me. Have you considered hiring a maid? I know it's bad, but let's get straight to the straight to business, shall we? May I see this fruit of power that you have? We don't have it. What? We oops. That's not right. I'll have to fix that one later. I haven't play tested, finished all my play tests of part three, so that's why it's a bit I'm going to be a bit rough around the edges. So I hope you understand. What do you mean you don't have it? I cannot. I can't believe this. Other error. Awesome. More errors in part three. I'm sorry. That was unbecoming of me. I was just excited to get my hands on it. I apologize. We do have this other fruit of the gods. Do you know? 
what this one does. Let me see. Well, I'm not sure. You see, I don't have my research notes on me right now. I am not going to be searching this mess. My notes are in the book I wrote. It's in the school's library. Sally has been closed for a few days for repairs and doesn't seem like it'll open anytime soon. Group huddle, my chums. What's the idea? It's already closed, so why don't we just sneak in inside and take the book? I'm not sure. What do we get caught? I believe it's a fair plan. I do not imagine a library needing the most security. Exactly, Seleph. I don't know about you guys, but I do not intend to sit around and wait for it to reopen. It could take days or even weeks. I really hope you four aren't planning to commit any crimes. I cannot endorse it if so. Excuse me, do you mind? I don't recall inviting you into this conversation. So, are we all in? There's some risk, but it's better than waiting. If anyone sees us, we just gotta clobber them on the head. That'll knock them out. Yeah, sounds like a good enough idea. Great, goop puddle break. So I believe we are done here. Well, let me hold on to this, hold on to that fruit of the gods. It might be able to determine what it does. As long as we get it back. Of course, let's just stay in number and I'll message you as soon as I do. How long do you think you'll need? I'm not sure, but I will contact you as soon as I know. In the meantime, please feel, please feel free to explore the city. If you have any questions about Alicia, I'll be right here. Oh, I'm sorry, but I forgot to give you this. Map of Alicia. Yep, needing the quickly find your way to the central hub of the city? Use this. So we can talk to him and we get out, like, you know, we can ask him questions. You could do the same with Professor Owl in part one. Uh, we got a bunch of rooms. We got Professor Blizzwold. So here's a secret you're only going to hear from me. If you, um... If you, um have the artifact you can give it to professor blizzwald or professor flitzwald and they give different rewards that's a little secret oh uh, also you can use the elysia map and you're warped back into here or this is the world map you can go to either location you can go to shopping street uh shop here um I'm trying to think of short things I can show. Actually, I think I want to be in park sh in Shopping Street. There's a little side thing. If you go around the back, go in this corner, you can fit through a little hole. And let's put the anard. I have a good feeling about this, my chums. My bard sense is tingling. Ah, controller for Guitar Warrior. Can you believe it? I love that game. It smells disgusting. Don't worry, Seth. We'll just have to find a sink or a bath to clean it up at. Be good as new. So that's the first, that's a little first part of the traveling, uh, or the Leonard's third weapon quest. We got this. What are you looking at, punk? Don't worry, we are just exploring. We'll explore someone else, will you, punk? Don't make me have to teach you a lesson, punk. Of course, we are actually leaving right now. The best way to leave right now, at least in math. I love the, the shortcut. We got Coliseum. We can do some fights. Um, but is there anything specific I want to show here? I don't want to show too much of Alicia because it's not even out yet. So it's, I don't want to go somewhere where it's not going to be refined. But we can always uh, we can check the vibrate. It's a grayish green. Go to the Park Street. It's a grayish green bow of yellow to the north. So, hmm. It's a little extra info. Well, actually, we'll do this. Um, I believe if Drek searches this. Whoa, it's alive! It's a rat. I forgot to set a background for this area, I'm noticing. Let me write that one down. It is funny, though, because you get the big portrait. I could have got garbage on my dress. Sorry. Thank you, research. Oops. Wrong one. I think. Leonard. 50 gold. 
who calls the Coastal Guardians in the club. And this guy's like, hey, can I have 50 gold? Let him in. Enter yourself with 50 gold. Some trash cans you can search. You can buy some jazzy drinks at the bartender. I think if we search this. One of these. What was? Oops. Um. One. I think there's something in one. Oh, yep. You get a jazzy drink if you search with Leonard specifically. Um, my last thing. Welcome to the Jazz Club. A little birdie told, said you four were looking for the jazz. Well, yes, my chum. We are, on, we are on the journey, but there has been a serious lack of jazz. We came to the right place. Here, enjoy this gift from me. Now you'll be able to enjoy the jazz anywhere on your journey. Are you liking the jazz? No. You dirty rat. So I wanted to show that thing, but... Use the Elysium map. Now. Okay, that is good to remember. I'm gonna have to write that one down. There's an issue with the tents when you use the map to warp out. So there we go. Now the map's normal. But any on any map in the game, you can put the jazz. Now it really is a journey and jazz. I use the Elysium map and play it again. All right, I think that's about all I wanted to show for the anniversary of Journeys and Jazz. You might maybe you learned something new about part one or part two. Maybe you just learned about part one or part two. Maybe you're maybe you see a little bit of part three and it makes you excited to play it. Who knows? This was fun to do. I, I, I really enjoyed doing this, even if my throat is killing me. Um, I don't know. Everyone who came stopped by, if you sent a chat message and stuff, um, thank you for showing up. I really appreciate it. Um, I've been working on this project for so long, it feels like. Especially if I include the original Journeys in Jazz, it's like the tabletop one. I've spent so much of my life working on Journeys in Jazz as a whole, it is huge, it's impressive. And I'm excited to work more. But um, that's going to be all for me. I will um... See you all next time. Well, I say next time, but who knows what next time will be? Follow my Twitter at Remelia Rosalia. Go play Journeys and Jazz yourself. Leave a review or a comment on the Itch store. Go follow my Tumblr or something. It's also at Remelia Rosalia. I post dev updates on Twitter and Tumblr. You can find them in at my itch.io page. Just look up Journeys and Jazz to prove the gods and you should hopefully see something. But um Yeah, that's it. I hope you all enjoyed it.